happy times in San Marcos, Texas. For the first time, Texas State is in the Division I AA Championships. They take on the Eagles of Georgia Southern. And Eagles legs, we're gonna get you. Go Bobcats! teams get in the Division One AA Championships. One will emerge as a champion just two weeks from now. Georgia Southern, a six-time champion in this division, taking on Texas State, making their first ever visit to these championships. They do have a couple of Division II titles under their belts. And we welcome you to San Marcos, Texas. We're just south of Austin. Pam Ward joined by David Norrie. Quint Kesnick will join us shortly. And, uh, and David, we don't have any polls. We don't have any computers. We have, have no BCS. We just have two teams fighting to go on in a playoff system. Well, I think it's really refreshing. I mean, you have 28 bowl games in Division I football. 27 of them have nothing to do with the championship. I think it's really refreshing. You have two teams today that are fighting for a chance to play next week, fighting for a chance to win a championship. And how about that, playing for a championship? What a con Concept. And for Texas State, they have a terrific quarterback in Barrett Neely. A lot of NFL scouts like this guy. Well, his game against Texas A&M really put him on a lot of scouts' radar screens. Mel Kuyper has him rated as the number five quarterback coming up in next spring's draft. He's really part of a new generation of quarterbacks that are, number one, comfortable throwing the ball from the pocket, but number two, very effective getting outside with their feet, hurting defenses. He had over 800 yards this year rushing for Texas State. You see Southland Conference's play of the year and if you like rushing you're in love Georgia Southern they are well known for that option offense that they run and their quarterback Jason Foster really gets it going well they've run this spread option offense for over two decades now and it really is a thing of beauty to watch Jason Foster he's five foot nine 160 pound quarterback working to his fullback Jermaine Austin both of them had over 1300 yards rushing this season and they operate this offense to perfection the Georgia Southern rush attack is the best in the country. Mike Seawalk in his seventh year in charge of them. He runs that option offense to perfection. Actually, his fourth year. Second season for David Bailiff. He's taken him to the playoffs for the first time at his alma mater. We have Georgia Southern and Texas State coming up. Welcome to San Marcos, Texas. About to get underway. Texas State taking on Georgia Southern for the first time ever. This Texas State defense really has a tough task trying to stop the number one rushing offense in the country. For more on that, let's go down to the field and Quint Kesnick. Pam, this is a defensive line that is super sized. They have two senior defensive tackles, Fred uh, Evans and Travis Upshaw. Both these guys weigh above 300 pounds. Evans comes in at 6'5", 325. Upshaw weighs 350. Evans with the Southland Conference's Defensive Player of the Year this year, 15 tackles for losses. He'll be showcasing his talent in the Hula Bowl. And Travis Upshaw weighs 350. The two are attached at the hip. Coach David Bailiff calls them his twins. They spent Thanksgiving together with seven other defensive linemen. And the seven defensive linemen ate three turkeys for Thanksgiving. Pam? Three turkeys for seven guys. Almost a half a turkey per. Good going by them. A beautiful day. We had bad weather earlier come through this area, but right now 69 degrees and partly cloudy skies. A nice wind coming out of the southwest. Texas State will get the football first in this game. They won the toss and elected to receive. So the Bobcats, the fourth seed in this NCAA 1AA championships. They only seed the top four teams and then everybody else falls into place. And Georgia Southern with six national championships. No one on this team has been a part of one, however. The Eagles last won it all in the year 2000. And Texas State makes its debut in the 1AA championships. Damian Williams gets the kickoff and fumbles it. The one thing Texas State did not want to do was let go of the ball. They had several lost fumbles last week, and they were fortunate to get that football back. So here comes Barrett Neely, 6'5", 230, a double threat at quarterback. In his three years, he has already shattered this school's all-time total yardage record. Yeah, what was really impressive about Neely, you know, early in the season, this team matched up against Texas A&M, and Eric Neely threw for close to 400 yards against Texas A&M, and he also was very impressive running the football against the Aggies in that game. 
We have a Georgia Southern player down on that play, on the uh, kickoff, the opening kickoff. And these two teams have never met. Both teams joined 1AA play in 1984. Mike Seawalk now in his fourth season, the Southern Conference Coach of the Year last year, now in his second playoff. And he has been an assistant on several teams. He was with Jim Grobe at Ohio, also worked at Hawaii. So he really knows this option offense very well. And right now, though, his concern is for the player on the field. And it is Tim Camp, who is a valuable receiver for this Georgia Southern team. Well, and the first string wide receiver for Georgia Southern, Reggie McCutcheon. It's a question mark, a game time decision, and Tim Camp was scheduled to start if McCutcheon couldn't go. Camp is up. He only has three catches on the year, but an 11 yard Joe average. They use him as a tight end. As a true freshman, they really uh, have great expectations for Camp as he limps off the field. Yeah, and that's part of the Georgia Southern offense, and we'll get to see them next possession here but not a lot of catches spread out amongst the wide receiver core for Georgia Southern but when they get down the field and play action they've got big yardage per catch numbers and look at Barrett Neely the transfer from Houston he started at Houston as a redshirt freshman but tore his ACL four games into his first season there was a coaching change he left and ended up here at Texas State first play of the game and Neely out of the shotgun, expect to see this all day. Look at the talent from Barrett Neely. The first play of the game, and he is brought down just inside the five-yard line. Neely with an explosive 76-yard run. Well, we talked to the top about Barrett Neely and his ability made several Game-breaking style runs against Texas A&M earlier this season. A.J. Bryant, the free safety, just runs him down inside the five. And we'll be seeing planned runs for Barrick Neely all afternoon long. This defense for Georgia Southern's going to have to prove they can stop the quarterback run. Well, that 76-yard run. So now he's over 900 yards on the season. And Nick Session, who scored the game-winning touchdown in overtime last week, in the win over Sam Houston State gets the carry. Marquis White has been Neely's favorite target. It's six foot seven. He starts for the basketball team here at Texas State. And Thomas Karras Torrey and Luke Porter, both first team all Southland Conference performers on this offensive line. Second and goal now. Right back to session. And he has stopped just short of the goal line. They'll mark him about a half a yard short. T.J. Rutledge, the very talented middle linebacker, coming up to make the stop for the Eagles. Yeah, Texas State, they go very deep at running back. They have four tailback rotation. Session is the short yardage back. David Bailiff has four different running backs that all bring a little bit something different to the party. And all very similar as far as carries on the season as he is spread it out among the four. Neely takes it the final half yard or not. Touchdown. So Barrett Neely, who went 76 yards on the first offensive play of this game, takes it the final yard for the score. Neely with his 12th rushing touchdown of the season, 17 in his career, and the Bobcats strike first. Extra point is true from Stan Jones. And it's really only fitting that Neely should be able to take this in after that great run of 76 yards. Well, third and goal from the one. You got a quarterback six foot five, 230 pounds. And no need turning and giving to the tailback when you've got that type of size and athleticism at quarterback. Solid call. And Texas State jumps out early on Georgia Southern. And, and Pam, you need to do that against an option team because 
Now, Georgia Southern does not give opposing offenses a lot of opportunities. They, they possess the ball, they keep things on the ground with the, with the option, and oftentimes you only get 50, 55 plays offensively in a football game when you're going up against this Georgia Southern team. That's right, you gotta make the most of it, and four plays able to get the job done. Neely with 76 yards on the first play from scrimmage, and then he takes it home. That, by the way, is not his career long. He had an 81-yard run against Stephen F. Austin earlier this season on a quarterback sweep. And David Bailiff, you just saw him there, the head coach, said that the one thing about this young man, very impressive, very modest, after that run, he said, well, it was the offensive line. They're the ones who really should get credit for the touchdown, not me, but it was a great 81-yard touchdown run against Stephen F. Austin. Yeah, and visiting with him yesterday, you really, you know, some kids tell you that, and they act humble, and they give credit to their teammates, but you, know, you talk to the people that have been around here, San Marcos, Texas, for the last couple of years, and they say that's really what he's about. He's a very, you know, he's a thoughtful kid. He has all the skill in the world. I mean, he has a complete toolbox, and you know, the real question for him, he's, he's pretty young in terms of playing time, but the question will be how comfortable will he be throwing from the pocket? How will his feet, his footwork be down the line? I think he's an NFL prospect. He is a senior, and we do expect to see him drafted come April, and that kickoff, very dangerous. Teddy Kraft eventually picks it up for Georgia Southern, but obviously that's a live ball on the kickoff. And now we get to see this spread option for Georgia Southern. The best rushing offense in Division I AA. Jason Foster, 10th in the country himself with 1,330 yards on the ground this season. Yeah, and you don't want to turn Foster loose in space. He's got excellent speed, and you look at his height and size. At 5'9", 165 pounds, he takes a lot of abuse at the quarterback position, and from time to time, he has to come off for a play or two. He is the first-year starting quarterback. He was a wide receiver and punt and kick returner last year for the Eagles. And something we're going to see all day is Jermaine Austin getting the football. Number six gets the first carry for Georgia Southern. Austin is sixth in the nation in rushing and the 11th most career yards in one double-A football. And he will move into the top ten at least in this game. And we will chart that for you. Chad Moat is a two-time first-team All-Southern Conference offensive lineman. Really makes this spread option go. Four yards for Austin on the first play. And now the pitch to Lenon Jefferson, and Jefferson picks up the first down, picking up eight. Texas State's defense, what a task. Travis Upshaw and Fred Evans, good friends off the field, a lot of pressure on them today as they try to stop this offense. They are the first line of defense. It is, this is a 4-2-5 defense, only two backers, Jeremy Castillo and David Simmons, and Daniel Varvel, a talented transfer from Arizona State, mans the free safety position for the Bobcats. And on first down, not much going. Maybe a yard for Austin. As he is brought down. There's Fred Evans, number 55. Also had a chance to visit with him. And one thing that was a common theme with the players we visited with from Texas State, they talked about how close this team is and what a family they have become. And look at those numbers. No doubt why he was the player of the year in this conference defensively. Second and nine for the Eagles. Foster hanging on to it, and that looks like it will be a face mask as he picks up five, but one of the Texas Southern defenders got his hand up high near Foster's face mask. This is a Big Sky Conference officiating crew. John Maloney, our referee. Incidental face mask, number 50 defense. Five yards will be added to the end of the run. Third down. Yeah, a five yard face mask will set up a second and short, but you get a look at Jason Foster, and he's there's the face mask. And Foster's a type of quarterback where if there's any question, he's going to keep the ball himself. He's got a lot of confidence, and you know, he really should have a lot of confidence. He's gone over 1,300 yards, and very quick, and as I said, in space, he's dangerous. He's, he's really a breakaway quarterback in the spread bone attack. And he certainly proved how dangerous he was last year, the Southern, Southern Conference's freshman of the year. And on the pitch, he gets it out to Jefferson. And Jefferson, who's already run for one first down, gets close to another as we go back to the studio and Matt Weiner. Pam, Southern Illinois on the road, not far, but on the road at Eastern Illinois and taking a 14-3 lead, Archie Whitlock. 
outside for his second of the day. Saluki's on top midway through the third. For the Battle of Illinois, the Division I AA playoffs, this is the first day. Furman and New Hampshire have already won to advance on. And the championship will be coming two weeks from yesterday, a week from Friday in Chattanooga. 16 teams in the two weeks are done with the playoffs, and they're just a little bit short, so second and inch is coming up. We saw New Hampshire win convincingly this morning, and you know, they're ranked number one in the country. A lot of coaches involved in the playoffs have Appalachian State as the, the favorite. But uh, what a great thing in college football. What a novel idea to actually have a playoff like every other sport professionally or college you know on our planet. Leave it to Division One double A Division Two Division Three to actually have a postseason format that, that makes some sense and is, is really an exciting format. Absolutely this game matters all games matter in these playoffs. And right up the middle again, it is Austin. He takes it down to about the 43-yard line of Texas State. We grew up you know, watching the great option offenses. A lot of us did. Oklahoma, Nebraska. Remember the wishbone? Billy Sims, the quarterbacks at Oklahoma. J.C. Watts, Thomas Lott. This is a different offense in that the fullback is the featured back, not, not the slot backs. And, and uh, you got to really stop Jermaine Austin, the fullback, first in this offense. The first key is no play. Flag comes down on the field. Before the snap, false start. Number 19 on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. It's Tim Camp, a wide receiver, off to a kind of a rough start. He got roughed up on the opening kickoff, and then now whistled for that play and it pushes him back five yards. Well, the premium on execution and not committing penalties on offense is really heightened for, a, for an offense like Georgia Southern because they're not equipped to pick up second and long, third and long situations. They've got to be very disciplined in their execution at the line of scrimmage. Obviously, they don't throw the ball very much, but when they do, they have an extraordinary average. And holding on to it as Foster spins away from the first tackler, but then gets it down to the 45, picked up about three. Let's get another update now from Matt Weiner. Pam's looking more and more like the Big 12 North title, appropriately enough, is going to come down overtime because Kansas has tied it. Brian Luke to Dexton Fields. Jayhawks now 21 all. Time running out in the fourth on Iowa State. Wow, well, can you believe that? The wacky Big 12 North. It's going to be at least a couple of years in a row now where somebody just need to win, you get in, and there's all sorts of crazy things going on. The Cyclones give away that game after being on the doorstep a year ago, getting into the championship game. Boy, eighth play of this drive. Foster shows his maneuverability and is able to get it down just short of the 40-yard line. He picked up four, but there you see a lot of the jukes that made him such a, a good punt and kick returner last year. In fact, he had a touchdown in both disciplines as a kick and punt returner last year. Well, this team, the most passes they've thrown in a game, seven attempts this year. So they don't throw the ball often, but when they do, they make it count. And this was a, a half roll pass situation, but when they can really hurt you, and you gotta watch throughout the game, they can hurt you with play action. They try to get their athletes down the field, take big chunks in the pass game. So how do they do on third and eight? Well, if you're an option team, you run the option. And great pursuit by the Texas State defense as he is dragged down by Nick Clark. And just because it's fourth and relatively long doesn't mean that Georgia Southern's going to kick the ball. No, they, uh, they like to go for it on fourth down and not necessarily on fourth and one or fourth and two. And Mike Seawalk has made really a career here at Georgia Southern early of going for it on fourth down, and he's not afraid to do it even in negative territory on his own side of the fifth. Yes, he has done that, and he is going for it right now on fourth and five. The 34th time this year they've gone for it on fourth down. It's McCutcheon in motion. And Georgia Southern trying to call a timeout before the play. Let's see if they got it. Timeout was called before the ball was snapped. Timeout Georgia Southern, that's their first timeout of the fourth. So the fans boo that decision because the snap was fumbled, but look at Coach Seawalk wanting a timeout, and he gets it, a huge fourth and five coming up when we return. 
unknowable. Mike Seawalk with a very nice sprint to the official to get a timeout right before the last play. So Georgia Southern again for the 34th time this season going forward on fourth down, 73% success rate. This is a fourth and five. Foster rolling his first pass of the game, and it's complete. Reggie McCutcheon takes it in for the touchdown. Check that, it's Teddy Kraft, number 85, who takes it in. They gamble again on fourth down, David, and it works. Football team that does not throw the ball very often. That's only the 58th throw of the season for Foster. But his seventh touchdown, and this crowd has quieted down in a hurry. Jonathan Dudley adds the extra point. And Teddy Kraft, second team Southern Conference receiver, a 38-yard touchdown on fourth and five, and we are tied in San Marcos. Welcome back to the campus of Texas State University. Got a good one going early. Texas State now tied with Georgia Southern at 85-yard drive. It was 10 plays, and that young man, Teddy Kraft, with a 38-yard touchdown catch on fourth and five. So you gamble, and Foster completes it. Foster, coming into this game, was averaging just under 24 yards per pass completion on average. 24 yards per completion. So, you know, they suck a year in a lot of time with the option, and they go up top, and like we saw in that touchdown, quite often it works. Morris Crosby takes a knee. They'll start from the 20. Let's go back to the touchdown. Well, what was really interesting is this is a passing situation, so Foster's going to come outside. Watch Kraft at the top of the screen. Now, he's going to run a deep stop route, and he's covered. So watch him work for his quarterback back to the center of the field. This is just a great play. He knows his quarterback's under duress in the pocket. He finds the open area to the middle of the field, and that's really a heck of a throw by Foster to lead him to the center of the field for the touchdown. Two pass attempts on that possession. We mentioned at the top, in the most attempts in a football game this season for the Georgia Southern offense, seven attempts. So Foster, what a pass as he is able to complete it for his seventh touchdown of the season. And that is really Georgia State, or Georgia Southern, excuse me, their M.O. under Coach Seawalk. Gamble for it on fourth down, and it worked like a charm that time. Georgia Southern has won four straight games coming into this game, and now they've tied up Texas State. Second possession for the Bobcats. And the handoff to Morris Brothers, who he goes down rather quickly. Let's go back now to Matt Weiner. Pam, in the 1A world, a lot of BCS stakes for some of the late games, including South Florida and UConn. If the Bulls win out, they're the BCS representative from the Big East, but it's Lou Allen going the other way for UConn. 60 yards in the touchdown, and the Huskies get the jump with a 7 0 lead. Tough year for the Huskies. They have been injury ridden this season, but South Florida, what a great story that would be if they could win today. And uh, boy, a tough one coming up there against West Virginia next week. We have a Georgia Southern player offsides as Marquis White, all six foot seven of him, makes his first catch for 11 yards as the flag hits the field. Officials making sure they get it right. Offside, defense number 94. The penalty is declined. Play, result of the play is a first down. Marky White leading receiver for Texas State. Grabs that for first down at 6-7. David Bailiff and his offensive coordinator, Tom Herman. Herman says he has an entire section on his play sheet just for Marquis White. Very talented, of course, when you're 6'7", much taller than any defensive back you're ever going to face. First and 10 from the 36 for the Bobcats. Neely zips it and completes it again to White. He's made a couple of catches in a row, and that one is near the first down. 
Division One AA championships are underway from Bobcat Stadium in Texas. Barrett Neely with a 76-yard run on the first play from scrimmage that took it in later on that drive for a one-yard touchdown. Teddy Kraft, a 38-yard touchdown pass from Jason Foster on fourth down, has tied it up as Texas State makes its first postseason appearance since 1983 and first since they joined 1AA. They do have a couple of Division II titles under their belts, but that was well over 20 years ago. And another offsides. Free play here for Neely. And he lifts it again complete to Marquis White. And White grabs it and is taken down at the 29-yard line. Larry Beard that time was well offsides. As Texas 55. State moves the ball downfield. Penalty is declined. Result of the play, first down. Well, Derek Neely, yeah, we mentioned he's up on the top five or six senior quarterbacks on the draft board in next spring's NFL draft. And you can see that he's starting to improve his prospects late in the season. Not only did he recognize Beard in the neutral zone, but he, he tried to take it downfield and make a big play knowing that he had that five-yard penalty in his back pocket. That's a super play by Neely. Neely three for three on the day. All three of those throws to Marquis White. Another first down for the Bobcats. Another completion. This time he, he, he hits Clellan Cook. Richard freshman from San Antonio. His first catch good for seven. Let's take a look now at the Georgia Southern defense. Sherrod Taylor walked onto the Eagles after he served four years in the Navy. A 25-year-old starter now. John Mooring is the leading tackler and in the secondary aj bryant they call him their window wiper and he has caught the eye of some nfl scouts another guy we had a chance to visit with yesterday from this georgia southern team now on second and three and daniel jolly a transfer from colorado the first time he's gotten his ball or his hands on the ball picks up a couple jolly's sort of the, the hammer on this team as they really do distribute the carries with these four running backs. But Jolly, with Douglas Sherman out with a high ankle sprain, really has become the man in the last four games. Daniel Jolly is a transfer from Colorado. I mean, he played in the fullback position for Colorado. When he transferred, he wanted to make sure he went to a school where he could be featured a tailback. And they have done just that at Texas State. Next session, the short yardage guy is piled up before he's able to get to the first down marker. So a fourth and short. Coming up now for Texas State. Stan Jones is their field goal kicker. They're five for 12 on fourth downs during the season. And they're going for it. Yeah, we've seen this from both teams earlier. This is, a, this is a playoff game. And both coaches trying to maximize their possessions, not afraid to roll the dice early here in the first quarter. Both teams being aggressive. Session number 30, again, the short yardage back in the backfield. And Neely decides to hang on to it, and he will not get it. So they run a little option to the right side, and the Georgia Southern defense, led by their leading tackler, John Mooring, stuffs him. So Rutledge and Mooring team up to get Neely down. Texas State goes for it on fourth down. They don't get it. So Georgia Southern has it when we return. Doing a beautiful day on this Thanksgiving weekend and enjoying the first time they've seen their Bobcats make the Division I AA playoffs. Tied up against Georgia Southern. Here comes that option, and there's Austin right up the gut. He picks up five on first down. Well, wow, it, it really is a quick hitter when they hand the ball to Austin inside. And he's not a breakaway speed kind of back. But you blink and you'll miss him. He's very much an attacking style back. You know, lower body strength. And he's got good vision too. You give him some creases inside and he's gonna exploit. Very low center of gravity too. He was listed at 5'8". 
And that is very generous, but it doesn't matter how big you are when that you're that talented as Austin takes it for a first down, picking up a dozen yards. For more on Austin, the mighty might, let's go down to Quinn Kessnick. Pam, you mentioned uh, his ability as a high school wrestler. He was recruited by a bunch of Division I schools. He credits his wrestling background with his balance, his stability, and he said it keeps him grounded. He also mentioned, as one of the seniors on this team, a, a class that lost in the 2002 semifinals and last year in the first round, that leadership was paramount this week. As they are looking for a championship, the right tackle getting up quickly. It looks like Russell Orr got up too quickly there for Georgia Before Southern. the snap, false start. Number 62 in the offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. And that's who they got for the penalty, or the sophomore from Thomasville, Georgia, but boy, Jermaine Austin was a great wrestler. Not a lot of football scholarship offers for him. He told us that Tennessee Chattanooga was interesting, uh, interested rather, and SUNY Cortland in New York. And of course, Georgia Southern, what a great opportunity and probably perfect for the kind of player he is to run in this offense. Uh, people are probably tired of lining up against him in the Southern Conference. <laughs> Two years ago, player of the year as a freshman, freshman of the year, four times all conference at that running back position. 32 career 100 yard games as Foster hangs on to it. And look at the quarterback go. Jason Foster is finally hunted down from behind Jason right Foster. around the 10 yard line. Speed from Wellington to Shield and Gary Shepard to get him. But that's 56 yards. Yeah, and what sets up this play is the fake inside to Austin. And to be a a competitive and a talented spread offense team. You've got to fake inside. You've got to convince defenders, make them bite. That was a great fake inside by Foster. And as you can see on the replay from the end zone angle, you give him some space and he's gone. Remember Foster 10th in the country in rushing coming into this game as he hands it off to Austin. And it's second and goal now coming up for Georgia Southern. Yeah, it's really tough for a defense to line up against this jo Georgia Southern team after a week of practice when you don't really get the look that they give you on option, the speed, and I'll tell you what, they, their eyes were open when they saw Jason Foster break out in the perimeter. There's Texas State defense up against it now on second and goal, and it's no problem. Austin barely touched as he goes into the end zone for the go-ahead score. So Jermaine Austin scoring the touchdown. For him, his 14th of the season. And Georgia Southern takes its first lead. Set up by that career high tying 56 yard run from Foster. Dudley's extra point makes it 14 7. Eagles. Well, and you've got to take away the fullback first. You've got to eliminate the fullback in Georgia Southern's offense. And the Eagles really thrive on the ability of Austin inside. That was blocked perfect. And Georgia Southern has three guys working inside. Wayne at center, Moat, the all-conference player at right guard, and Marcelo Estrada. The strength of this offense is right up the middle. You got Foster at quarterback, Austin behind him at the fullback position, and they're very strong guard to guard, including that center up front. Well, you said, David, perfectly blocked. Austin not even touched as he scampered into the end zone for the touchdown. And boy, this Texas State defense up against it with this option offense. They've already given up two touchdowns here in the first quarter. And we'll take a look from the end zone angle at the work up front between guards and center. I mean, that's a great block on the right side there by Moat. I mean, he just collapses the interior defensive line for Texas State. And Pam, and it's just so hard not only to prepare for this offense when you, when you only have a week to prepare for them, but, but also you get into a game situation and teams tend to take the wrong angles in pursuing backs, taking the fullback. And, and we saw a defense that, that took notice on Jason Foster's long run down the right sideline, and you start overcompensating for the quarterback and the pitch man, 
Jermaine Austin walks into the end zone for the touchdown. And remember that this Texas State team, they played Nichols State earlier this year, an option team, and Nichols State put up a tidy 375 yards on the ground. So they have had trouble with the option this year. And Texas State now down seven will take over at the 20. Their very first possession, and then going for it on fourth and down on their second possession, didn't make it. Daniel Jolly gets a couple of yards, making about five on first down. Let's go back to Matt Weiner. And that beeping sound you hear is Colorado backing into the Big 12 North Division title in the Big 12 championship game. Brett Culbertson in overtime misses the 41-yarder for Iowa State, so it's Scott Webb to win it for Kansas. Jayhawks bowl eligible for the second straight year. Iowa State loses the Big 12 North in the final day of the season. Wow, can you believe that? So Colorado got thumped big time yesterday from Nebraska, and they still are playing for the title. That one's up top to the big guy, White, and he is double covered, and it falls incomplete. Another free play because the flag is down on the field. Uh, Georgia Southern's defense, they have a 4-3 scheme, and they really like to give you looks before the snap and then change. They're a big disguise team. They're a big blitz team, and we've seen them early in this football game trying to time the snap three or four times they've been in the neutral zone. Offside, defense number 92, five-yard penalty. Results in a first down. So they get Brian France that time. That is the second offsides against Georgia Southern. Remember, two more were declined, so that's four jumps for them. Well, this defense is undersized, and so, you know, up front, the defensive linemen are trying to get into gaps quickly, keep their pad level low. And, and Georgia Southern try to anticipate that snap count. Barrett Neely, quarterback for Texas State, has done a nice job with the snap count, buttoning them down up front. To now make it first and 10 from the 31. A play action, Neely hangs on to it as it was good coverage downfield. And Neely picks up a couple of yards. Good pressure from Jack Sherman. Well, I think what intrigues the NFL scouts about Barrett Neely is he's comfortable throwing from the pocket. We've seen him throw as a classic drop back passer already in this football game quite a bit. But he also has the ability to get outside and to get you out of trouble. And you know, the new generation of quarterbacks at the NFL level, guys like Donovan McNabb and Dante Culpepper, we look at his numbers, his career at Texas State. You know, that, that's what really gives defenses problem is that, that ability for quarterbacks to escape the rush. We got all those numbers in three years as Jolly the Colorado transfer. Gets it up to about the 37-yard line. For more on Barrick Neely, very talented quarterback. Let's go down to Quinn Kesnick. Pam, yesterday I asked Barrick to compare himself to an NFL quarterback. He was hesitant uh, to compare himself to any pro quarterbacks. He said, though, his ideal quarterback would have the build of Dante Culpepper, the feet of Michael Vick, the arm of Donovan, Donovan McNabb, the accuracy of Tom Brady, and the heart of Brett Carr. That would indeed, Quint, be a super quarterback, and the young man aims high. I tell you, he's, he's a great looking kid. I mean, at 6'3, six, six, 230, massive hands, just a specimen at quarterback. And he drops the football, rolling out to try to pass it. And the question is, was it a throw? And the officials on the field say, yes, it was. So it's an incomplete pass. And that was almost disastrous for Neely. Texas State got into some problems last week. They needed a win against Sam Houston State, and you see very clearly there, Barrett Neely was trying to hold that ball up on the delivery, accidentally let go of the football, but that's the correct call, incomplete pass. And they, they faced some problems last week against Sam Houston State. Five turnovers, really uncharacteristic of this team. They've been pretty good in terms of ball security throughout the season. Yeah, in fact, they are plus seven on the season in turnover margin. Georgia Southern plus six. Another flag comes down. Corey Eloff in for his first punt, but that doesn't even count. We'll have to do the play all over again. And Neely had a huge fumble last week against Sam Houston State on the t in the 10 with under a minute to go in regulation, and then they won it in overtime to be the Southland co-champs along with Nichols State and get in to the playoffs for the first time. 
movement on Texas State, so they'll have to punt it again. Now they'll have to punt it again if Georgia Southern Illegal takes formation. the penalty. I don't the think offense, they will. Only six men on the line of scrimmage. The penalty is declined. First and ten. Good call, Dave Norton, because they get pretty good, uh, pretty good field position after that illegal formation is declined. More football coming your way tonight. Marcus Vick and the Virginia Tech Hokies try and clinch a spot in the ACC championship game as they take on North Carolina. Our football primetime presented by Polaroid on ESPN tonight at 7:45 Eastern. North Carolina, Virginia Tech, also available in high definition on ESPN HD. Call your cable operator or satellite provider right now to get it. It is well worth it. And a timeout taken by Texas State. I think they only had 10 men on the field. As one of Coach Bailiff's players ran out at the last second, but they called a timeout. 29 seconds left to go here in the first quarter. Georgia Southern leading Texas State by a touchdown. Seconds left to go in this football game. Georgia Southern with the ball back, leading Merrick Neely and Texas State now by a touchdown. As they have scored on both of their possessions today. Now Georgia Southern with the football for the second time. And Foster, his first pass was a touchdown. His second pass is also a score. Unbelievable. 57 yards, Teddy Kraft has two touchdowns. Now we told you they don't throw often, but when they do, they are deadly. That was a beautiful ball, and, and Kraft made a super play to go up man to man, locked on on the post route and go up and get the football. I mean, Kraft, is opening some people's eyes down on field level. What a play. Extra point makes it 21-7 from Jonathan Dudley. Teddy Kraft, 5'11", 190 pounds. He's a junior. This was a great throw. Well, nothing fancy. They fake the sweep to the slot back. Foster loads it up, and that's a pretty ball, but what a play by Kraft on the football. Kraft has made two plays here in the first half that are real difference makers. First, he helped out his quarterback on the touchdown. And then on the straight post route down the center of the field, what a ball from Foster. And Kraft makes sure he secures the football up high, goes up and gets it. And Texas State and their fans are, are shocked, man. Well, if you're just joining us, Texas State, the fourth seed in the 16-team championship, scored the first time they had the ball. But Jason Foster, two throws, Two touchdowns, a 38-yarder on fourth and five to Teddy Kraft, and now a 57-yarder for a 21 to seven lead. And yeah, when you think Georgia Southern offense, you think, hey, we got to stop the fullback, and then we got to worry about the slot backs, all the motion, you know, the the reads inside to Austin, the decision making on the pitch between Foster and the slot backs outside, and then all of a sudden. And Georgia Southern says, we can throw the ball. Not only can we throw the ball, but we can hurt you. We can take chunks down the field. Look at the total yardage now. Georgia Southern with 225. This is the leading rushing team in the country in one double A. But they have 95 pass yards on two, on two plays. Both touchdowns. An incredible start for this Georgia Southern offense. Mitch Ware is their offensive coordinator. But everything goes through Coach Seawalk. Foster at 5'9", 160. He's making believers out of Texas State in terms of his throwing ability. I know he's made a believer out of me. Texas State with the first quarter waning. And boy, that kick goes through the end zone again. So here comes Texas State now down two scores. And Texas State goes right down the field with their first possession. And Barrick Neely with the long run made it look easy and in a flash the Bobcats find themselves down two touchdowns and you got to worry about that you don't want to get down 
two three scores against Georgia Southern the way that they can hold on the football and grind out yards keep that clock move not going to get a lot of possessions usually but when they're throwing long touchdown passes so this is unusual for Texas State to get the ball back this often in the first quarter nothing doing on that run Douglas Sherman coming in and getting that carry. Sherman missing the last four games with the high ankle sprain. But Jason Foster, he has been Superman. Two throws, two touchdowns, and Georgia Southern has that two touchdown lead after a quarter. The Bobcat mascot as he is being lifted up the stands here at Jim Wacker Field at Bobcat Stadium. And San Marcos, Texas. Beautiful day weather-wise, but not so beautiful for the home team, down 21 to seven. This is already their fourth possession of the game as we start the second quarter. Georgia Southern with a couple of long touchdown passes. And Barrett Neely tries to get his team in gear, and he overthrows everybody. In fact, the closest guy to it was Lewis Barr. Holding, number 62 offense, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot, still second down. So they get Joel Moore, the senior from Katy, Texas, for the hold. So Texas State off to a, a little bit of a rough start. You see Coach Bailiff trying to get his troops and keep his guys up. He mentioned about how tight they were. They played Sam Houston State here at home last week. They needed to win to get a co-championship in their conference. They were really tight, ended up winning that game, but he blamed himself for not having his guys loose enough. And right now, they're down by a couple of touchdowns and facing a second and 20. Up to the air again, as Neely completes it to Morris Crosby, and the true freshman does a lot of running around and picks up about five yards. Let's go back to Matt Weiner. Pam, pretty good one in Missoula, Montana, between Montana and Kyle Pauley. Lex Hilliard from the shovel pass already has one touchdown. Go ahead and make that two. This one's 66 yards worth. Grizzlies back within seven on their home field. Minute to go in the first. Lex Hilliard, one of the 16 finalists for the Walter Payton Award, which is a Heisman of the 1AA. We have a couple of guys on the watch list here as well, and Neely and Jerome Austin. Hilliard, a terrific running back. Bobby Houck's Grizz have to come from behind today and continue on in the playoffs. Neely, running room, and he will take that room as he is shoved out of bounds around the 21 by Sherrod Taylor. Taylor, the 25-year-old junior from Miami, spent four years serving in the Navy before he walked onto this Georgia Southern team. In fact, survived the terrible USS Cole terrorist attack in which 17 people were killed including a good friend of his Sherrod was lucky to maybe not pick up a 15 yarder no need to tackle Barrick Neely three four yards out of bounds he was walking the line then he was able to skirt walking the line and now fourth and nine Coriel off with a nice punt good hand time and it is taken by Teddy Kraft, he goes down immediately. Kraft has a couple of touchdown catches, gets that 45-yard punt. Georgia Southern with a 21-7 lead, and here comes the touchdown thrower, Foster, out again. San Marcos, Texas is about a half hour south of Austin. You see the sign on the left talking about the roses blooming in Texas. Texas with that win over A&M. Boy, A&M with a great fight yesterday in College Station, but able to beat the Longhorns who will be playing Colorado again in the Big 12 championship. Jerome Austin gets that first down carry, gets about seven yards, but it's the quarterback, Jason Foster, has been stealing the headlines. Yeah, he's been a big factor in the, the touchdown throw to Kraft on the first possession on the fourth down, and then the long run breaks it down the right sideline to set up the second touchdown. And how about this post ball? I mean, perfectly thrown to Kraft. Kraft goes up and gets it. Big first half for Foster. More time to go. 
Couple of passes, both of them for touchdowns. And second and three, Austin picks up the first down. Jerome Austin, who a self-described bowling ball of a football player. That's how he described himself yesterday during our meeting. Picks up eight yards and another first down. Well, and this is also Foster in terms of his decision-making inside. I mean, he's got to read the interior lineman, make the quick read, and decide whether he's going to give the ball to Austin or keep and come on outside on the option. And that's part of the mastery of Foster. So good at making that read and either giving to Austin or keeping it and coming outside to the perimeter. That's about a three yard gain for Austin again. And Austin was talking about how it took a while, took a few games in order for him to, to really get in sync with Jason Foster as he had been playing with a different quarterback up until this season. It's the first year for Foster starting. And he said it, it took him a little while just to get to get together on this. Well, and he fell in the shoes of Chaz Williams, who's a pretty good option quarterback in his own right. You know, Foster was an option quarterback in high school, played wide receiver last year for Georgia Southern. Ten carries for Austin as Marquise Maynard gets his first carry and loses a couple of yards. Nick Clark, a sophomore from Fort Worth, making the stop. That's an excellent play by Clark. And uh, these are the type of plays that Texas State is going to have to come up with on defense. You want to force this Georgia Southern offense. Look at that's That's a great play by Clark to beat Charlie Hopkins, the left tackle, and make that play. You want to force the Eagles into these third and long situations. This is not a comfort zone for Jason Foster. Third and nine. This is his third pass of the day. Going up top again. Again, he has a man. And again, he has a long completion. This time, Reggie McCutcheon. Three for three now for this Georgia Southern passing offense. Oh, this is just a great adjustment on the ball by McCutcheon. And he's working against Daniel Varvel, the ex-Arizona State defensive back. Ball slightly underthrown. And that's part of throwing offenses now, both at the college and the pro level. I mean, it's acceptable to underthrow athletes because you've got talent on the outside. As we look at the play selection numbers, you got talent outside that can make plays on the ball at the wide receiver position. Three for three and passing a flag down as Foster picks up about a yard before he is smacked around. So McCutcheon, who was a game-time decision, bruised his sternum in their last game in a kick return against Moorhead State with a great catch. Let's check out the flag as a train goes by. There are train tracks just to the other side of this stadium to our left, looking towards you in the field. Well, Texas State better wake up for their opportunities. Gonna Illegal go formation. Only six men on the line in scrimmage. Offense, five-yard penalty. Still first down. And Texas State's defense, when you come into this football game and you're focused on stopping the option package, Pam, you're really you're thinking about Foster, you're thinking about Austin, you're thinking about trick plays, but you don't think that they're going to unveil a deep passing game, and that has been the story of this game early. And how about the play of Kraft and McCutcheon at the wide receiver position? Kraft, two touchdown catches. Again, he's a second-team Southern Conference player, a junior. And he's also a good kick returner. He's carried the ball five times on the season for an average of 18 yards per carry. So he is a, an all-everything kind of guy. Pitch is taken by Maynard. He's out of bounds around the 15-yard line. Driven out of bounds by number seven, Gary Shepard. Well, from time to time, you come outside as a quarterback, and your pitch back doesn't maintain quite the right angle and relationship to the quarterback, and that looked close to a forward pass, which isn't a problem. I mean, actually, you don't mind that because if the ball hits the turf in this high-risk offense, it's ruled an incomplete pass. Second and 11 now. They go the other way. Lenon Jefferson and nothing doing. Melvin Weber, the free safety, coming up and making the stop. So we're going to a couple other ball carriers now on this series. And Texas State doing a better job. Well, Texas State has done a nice job in terms of their responsibilities for many of the plays here in the first half. But... Well, they've given up way too many big plays. Three big plays in the passing game. Foster breaking the long run. Texas State 
They can't afford to give up another four big plays in this football game, or I don't think they're going to be advancing next week. Third and 11 from the 14. Austin going down in the arms of David Simmons, and they're going to try a field goal. Georgia Southern has only tried seven field goals all season long, and that's Jonathan Dudley, who has missed his last three field goals, four for seven on the season. Last year, he was nine for nine. 29-yard field goal attempt coming up for the junior from Works, Virginia. Make it four straight misses for Dudley. So Georgia Southern, another nice drive, but this time they don't get Welcome back to Texas, says Mike Seawalk. Yeah, we all look at the uh, at the hold on this play. Yeah, bad snap and a nice play by A.J. Bryant, the holder, who is also a pretty darn good free safety. And you know, Jonathan Dudley is a place kicker. You're playing in a playoff game. That's a short try. He was nine for nine last year. And uh, not having quite the same success on the 2005 season. Nope, missed his last four. Fourth late on the season. Joey Tuttle, we showed him for a second, number 95. He got an earful from Coach Seawalk when he came off the field. I'm happy with that snap. And another whistle and another flag. Rather sloppy start to this game. Delay of game. Yeah. Offense number one. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Well, that's that that is uh, tough for an offense. When you come out of the huddle after a after a kickoff and after a missed field goal and you have plenty of time to come to the line of scrimmage and take a delay of game penalty. And that's just the quarterback losing track of the 25 second clock after he breaks the huddle. Usual mistake for the senior, Barrett Neely. It's on first and 15, and that pass is flat out dropped by Mark Key White as we go back for an update from Matt Weiner. All right, Pam, Virginia in South Florida today to take on to Miami show. and Al Grove deep into the playbook. Emmanuel Byers to Deion Williams. We'll go for the touchdown. Cavaliers go up 7-0, make it 7-3. Now it's 10-9. Miami has just scored. Thank you, Matt, as we all head towards the first ever ACC championship game coming up. They are going to divide it up into the Atlantic and Coastal Divisions. Second and 15 here. This is a Division I AA playoff game. And Neely for Texas State improvises and finds the wide open guy. And once again, it is his favorite target, Marquis White. Yeah, Neely has a nice little gift of moving in the pocket, adjusting to the rush, and then getting set. Look at he moves up to his left, skirts to his right, and really with ease, just that release, sidearm release. Out to Marquis White, who was on a curl route. The NFL scouts love to see that. They love to see a quarterback who can move and still be comfortable on the move delivering the ball down the football field. Marquis White, a senior at 6'7", a transfer from Long Beach City College and made his home here at Texas State. That was Sherman with another carry, and he picks up only a couple of yards. We've got more Division I AA playoff action coming your way tonight on ESPNU at 8 Eastern, the Battle of Virginia. Richmond takes on unbeaten Hampton from Hampton, Virginia. NCAA Division I AA football playoffs on ESPNU tonight at 8 Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. That's just one of the great stories here in the 16-team playoff format. The Pirates, the only one AA team undefeated going into the tournament. Catch that tonight on ESPNU. This fabulous first weekend. That pass from Neely is overthrown. Looking for Morris Crosby downfield. You know, Pam, and you talk about we're we're coming up on that first ACC championship game, and you know that you look at Division One AA. You have the playoff. You have 16 teams all with a chance to win a championship. And you look at Florida State. I mean, they've had a meltdown down the stretch. They've they've not played well, close to a collapse for the Seminoles, and yet they still could be in one of those BCS spots. You know, one of the top eight spots in Division I football. And to me, that's where the breakdown occurs in the format between Division I, AA, and Division I. Well, there should be a playoff system anyway in 1A, but the guaranteed spots in the BCS conferences just doesn't work, period. Third and eight right now for Texas State. They're down a couple of touchdowns. 
Neely zips it complete first down to Justin Williams. And Williams takes it into Georgia Southern Territory. A 20-yard catch. A real nice work up front by Texas State along the offensive line. They create a nice, comfortable pocket. And I like the way that Neely takes a little bit off the football. You can tell that he's becoming seasoned in the pocket. You know, he had the curl route outside. He didn't hurry the throw. He didn't try to put too much velocity on it. Nice and comfortable from the pocket, and that's a big play to move the chain. Eric Neely, the Southland Conference Player of the Year, with the nice throw. And now first down. Bobcats fighting back from two scores down. Neely pursued, gets away, and then the pass is complete. A terrific diving catch by Justin Williams. Two catches in a row for the junior from San Antonio. That's a beautiful 39-yard completion. Well, and how about the work in the pocket by Barrick Neely? And that's Fred Beard bearing down on him. And then the release down the field, and you're not going to see many catches like this at any level. I mean, what a catch, stretching out. And the coverage was pretty tight. Williams working against Barr, what a throw. Career long catch, 39 yards for Williams. Here's the pole, just inside the 10. Neely pitching it, Sherman. Escapes a couple of would-be tacklers and picks up three yards. Second and goal coming up as we take you back to Matt Weiner. Pam, Florida with a chance to beat Florida State in back-to-back -back regular season games for the first time since the 80s. And the Gators get it done on special teams. Marcus Thomas with the block. Reggie Lewis will scoop it and take it 52 yards for the score. So far, so good in the swap for the Gators. They're up 14-0. About that, Florida State down 14 zip. Yeah, Seminoles don't have to worry. They still go to the championship game. Neely, they lose. That's right. What the heck? Second down play, and boy, that was a dangerous pass as John Morin was all over Marquis White. Neely, fortunate that was not picked off. And Morin has had a heck of a season for Georgia Southern. Yeah, their top tackler, and as a quarterback, you've got to be safe with the football at all times but especially down in the red zone and especially when you're trailing by two touchdowns i thought the delivery was a little bit lazy in terms of execution sometimes as a quarterback you become a little bit lax with your delivery and that was dangerous down near the goal line Morning, a terrific tackler well over 100 on the season now third and goal from the six nearly on the roll looking for white and he has it, but it's tackled short of the goal line. Terrence McBride with the terrific tackle to keep White out of the end zone. But now fourth and goal from the one, and you got to believe they're going for it, and they are. Yeah, this is going to be from right about on that one-yard line, and I'm not sure if a quarterback sneak is an option here. And the first scoring drive for Texas State, Barrett Neely went in from about the half yard line, but I doubt we'll see a quarterback sneak on this play. Remember, they went for it on fourth and one earlier today. And Neely rolling out, was unable to pick it up, and now that's five more yards because the right side of that offensive line jumped for the Bobcats. It looked like Bomar and Jenkins. Before the snap, false start. Offense number 70, five yard penalty, remains fourth down. Now, Jenkins was not alone. You're right, David. Bomar jumped up, too, from the tight end position. And so instead of going for it, here comes Stan Jones for the field goal attempt. Jones is senior. Nine for 15 on the season. This one will be a 26-yarder. Check that, 23 yards for, for Stan Jones. Jones punches it through. But the false start keeps Texas State from trying to score the touchdown. They get the three points. 21 to 10, Georgia Southern leads in this first round playoff game. Eric Neely leading a drive that covered 10 plays, 57 yards, but a false start, so 74 yards, check that. 
They had to settle for a 23-yard field goal. And they had it. And goal from the one. Kraft fields that kickoff at his two and is dropped around the 20-yard line. Flag comes down. A couple of, a couple of flags down after Kraft's kickoff return. We've had quite a few penalties so far in this game. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 34 on the receiving team, will penalize half the distance to the goal line, first down. That is Brandon Andrews, a backup fullback, so they get pushed back 15 yards to the seventh. NCAA Championships on ESPN. This Division I AA football first round game is brought to you by ELO. For home or equity loans, go to elone.com. ELO, radically simple. The winner of this game will take on the winner of Cal Poly and Montana next weekend in the quarterfinals of the Division I AA playoffs. Georgia Southern pushback and Jerome Austin getting them out. They were down around the eight-yard line. Austin picking up nine on first down. Well, Georgia Southern has had some success establishing the runs inside with Jermaine Austin. And, you know, with the two talented defensive tackles for Texas State, now that isn't an easy task. You have Travis Upshaw and Fred Evans, both with super years, both all-conference players. But Georgia Southern getting it done in between the guards. And once again, the guy can. Austin, and he will pick up the first down for the Eagles. You know, and as a defense, it's so important when you play a good option team to be assignment perfect. You got guys that have to take the dive back, or the fullback. You've got another man responsible for the quarterback. You've got a defender on the pitch. You know, those are all things you need to worry about. You have to tackle well against option teams. But you didn't figure, you know, Texas State didn't figure, hey, we've got to play the deep ball well. We can't let guys get loose on the post. The passing game has been the factor. A couple of long touchdown passes that Foster has thrown today. That time he kept it on the option and picks up a couple of yards. Daniel Varvel coming up from the safety spot. You know, and Pam, when we talked to Mike Seawalk yesterday, you got the feeling that he was very confident in his team's ability to pass. And Jason Foster's... All right, obviously a transmission problem with our game from Texas State. Uh, Georgia Southern leading there in the second quarter. We'll get you back out to Pam Ward and David Norrie as soon as we possibly. Only a 29-yarder. So Texas State down in this game 21 to 10, gets it in very good field position at midfield. And Texas State, you know, any stop against Georgia Southern is a good stop. And you get that offense off the field, and you get the feeling that Texas State is starting to take some momentum back in this football game. They uh, kicked the field goal last time they had the football. And now Neely going up top, and he completes that to Chase Wasson. Wasson is the backup quarterback here at Texas State, but he has also played some wide receiver, gets 16 yards in the first down. Well, this is a, this is a double move on the outside. You see the pump fake by Neely. And you got to make throws like this throw if you're going to play at the next level. And I think Neely not only has the arm strength to make all the throws down the field, but he has the touch to drop the ball over the heads of linebackers and, and cornerbacks like on that last play. Fifth catch of the year for Watson, all of them coming in his last three games. And he has Neely's backup at quarterback. And the handoff taken down to the 30. Ball is loose, but it's being ruled down. Nick Session picking up four yards on first down. From Texas State, you know, you don't want to get out of your game plan. They were trailing by 14. They picked up the field goal. They've cut the lead. The session, really the short yardage back for Texas State, clearly down before the football came out. And the four tailbacks combined for over 1,500 yards. Texas State has to make sure, even trailing in this football game, that they don't give up on the run. They've got great balance in this offense. 
So obviously a lot of time left to go in this game. Under three minutes to go in the second quarter. Texas State trying to score. It would be a big one before we hit the half as Session gets the football again and falls forward for a three-yard gain. Matt Wise on the stop. Another factor in continuing to be stubborn about running the ball, even when you're trailing, is you want to make sure you keep your defense fresh. And I know David Bailiff is thinking, hey, we need to possess the ball some. We need to run some clock. And we don't want Georgia Southern to be the team when this game is through, when they're done with the 60 minutes, to say, hey, we were the ones that kept our defense fresh. And, and dominated the clock. Time of possession just about equal, and now on third down, the ball is loose. Georgia Southern says they have it. As Session was stopped short of the first down, and the question is, was it a fumble? Yes, it was. So Session almost lost a fumble earlier in this drive, and then gives it up. And it looked like T.J. Rutledge made the hit, number 42. You watch the center of the screen, and this is a big mistake just before half. Not securing the football, a third and short. And Texas State getting ready to move the chains and get a fresh set of downs. And Session gives up the rock. That is a huge mistake for Texas State. It looked like they had the momentum back in this football game. Yeah, boy, that's the last couple of drives. They only get three points out of them, and that's a big lick put on Foster by Gary Shepard. Shepard plays the cat position, sort of a weak safety as a flag comes down. Again, the Big Sky officiating crew today. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number seven on the defense. Results in a first down. And David Bailiff, the head coach, did not have kind words for Gary Shepard. And you hear the saying, act like you've been there before. That's a tremendous hit by Gary Shepard. But you don't need to get up and show teams up and individuals up. And David Bailiff, and you don't like to have go over and have those types of talks with your head coach coming out of that headset. I don't blame him for being angry with that with the penalty and going down is the quarterback in the arms of Jeremy Castillo. Foster goes down as Castillo comes blasting in with his fourth sack of the season. So Castillo with a good defensive play makes it second and 16. Yeah, this is a 4-2-5 defensive alignment for Texas State. And the Bobcats only utilize two linebackers. Castillo is really a heck of a player at that second level. And he has the ability to be a blitzer. They like to use him as a blitzer. And he can really run. He's a playmaker at that linebacker position. Yep, the leading tackle, and as I mentioned now, with another sack, his fourth of the season. Second and long, and the pitch going out to Maynard. And he gets it close to the original line of scrimmage, so a third and ten coming up. And we talked about some of the things you have to do as a defense to stop this spread option of Georgia Southern. And they've been running for over two decades, Pam, and you, know, you have to stick to your responsibilities, but also you have to win some of the man-to-man -man battles along the line of scrimmage. you got to whip the guy across the line of scrimmage from you, create some penetration, get this offense moving backwards and sideways. Mike Seawalk, the head coach, has been entrenched in this system for many years. Now in his fourth year in charge at Georgia Southern. Foster trying to get outside, and he does momentarily, but it stopped well short of the first down. Some terrific pursuit by this Texas State defense. Jeremy Castillo was there to help snuff it out. Texas State calling the timeout with 24 seconds left to go in the first half. the punt we remind you the division one women's soccer championships start friday at 4 30 eastern on espn2 and espnu for a preview of both women's college cup semifinal games visit ncaasports.com the official online home for all 88 ncaa championships and how about north carolina getting knocked out florida state beating the women in soccer and penalty kicks and what do you do you call a timeout before you receive uh, a punt? texas state at 24 seconds they call that timeout i think they're going to come after the punt here 
Got to take a shot at Dan Jordan, the punter. They got 10 men on the line of scrimmage. Here come the Bobcats, and Jordan gets it off a skyscraper. It actually takes a Texas State bounce, and the Bobcats will take over from the 26. Dan Jordan follows a 29-yard punt with a 27-yard punt. Matt Weiner can do a whole lot better than that. Man. I don't know about that. I know Jim Donovan could, though. Great punter back in his day. We'll be uh, here for halftime in just a moment. NBA news, including an update on Shaquille O'Neal's ankle. The crazy Big 12 North out of the final weekend again. Yeah, I'm going to tell you how Colorado lost out there today. We'll see you at the half in uh, about 12 seconds. All right, guys, we look forward to, of course, Coach Donnan. Let's call him a legend in Division I AA coaching, huh? Well, Did some great things in Marshall. Yeah, teams like Colorado and Florida State have a chance to get into a BCS game. you got teams like Auburn out there that would, you know, probably line up and beat them by 10, 20 points. Very flawed system. We don't have a flawed system here. We have a playoff, and we also have Quint Kesnick. Quint. I've got uh, head coach Mike Seawall. Coach, you've uh, attempted four pass plays, two touchdowns, one big play. Uh, why has the play action been so successful? Because we're on the football rather effectively, but it hasn't been effective after the last three series. At free state, he's coming down through the alley. He's a good football player. That defensive front's doing a good job. We've got to go ahead and we got to play a little bit harder at the point of attack. We've got to get some people to go ahead and worry about that play action pass and let that free safety hold it if he wants to try to make a play at the line of scrimmage. Main focal point, shutting down Barrick Neely in the second half. Well, heck, we got to continue to do that, get them off the field. We need to get some more points 21 points is not going to be the end of this game we need to go ahead and, and be a little bit more aggressive offensively and we got to go ahead and just play our game on defense don't give up any cheap ones thanks coach back to you pam all right coach seawalk there quint talking about the free safety that's daniel varvel the uh, free safety for texas state hey they scored touchdowns and their first three possessions since then a missed field goal and a couple of punts but still georgia southern with a 21 to 10 lead time to join matt weiner in the studio for the college football halftime report go guys Actually on the pitch and you know they did let up the big play to Jason Foster on the run on the keep but it's been passing plays Georgia Southern has hit two balls to craft a ball to McCutcheon down the field I don't think Texas State thought that Jason Foster could throw the ball as well as he did in the first half and take a look early Pam but Teddy Kraft was on a deep stop route helped his quarterback out back to the middle of the field this was the, the breakaway run by Jason Foster Really the only big play out of the running game for Georgia Southern in the first half. And then the post route down the middle of the field. A great throw and a pretty solid catch by Teddy Kraft. So Jason Foster, the quarterback, three for four, 135 yards passing. And you see the rush yards for Georgia Southern, 171. And boy, Texas State in their first ever Division I AA playoff game had a couple of opportunities in the second quarter. They missed a field goal and then had a fumble that they lost. So Georgia Southern gets the football first with a 21 to 10 lead. And Kraft, who has those couple of touchdown catches, takes it back to the 26 yard line. For more, let's go down to the field now and Quint Kesnick. Quint. Pam, I spoke to Texas State coach David Bailiff at halftime. He was most upset with their failure on third down. They're only two of seven on third down. He likes the way the Bobcats are defending the option. But the most interesting thing about halftime was Barrett Neely, their quarterback, for the first five minutes of halftime, he was on the life cycle. He was on the bike machine in the training office. And then for the last four minutes, he hopped on it again. I asked him if he does that all the time. He says, yes, we do that all the time for me to keep my, uh, my legs warm. Uh, they'd like for him to warm up his arm, obviously, and get this offense going as Jermaine Austin, his first carry of the second half, picks up four or five yards. Austin leading the way with 72 yards on the ground in the first half. Now, we talked about Neely in our open, the NFL prospect. Mel Kuyper says he's number five for any senior quarterback on his draft list. But it was Foster who really came in here and showed us some terrific things with those two long touchdown passes. Yeah, Neely had impressive stats in the first half, but you don't expect Foster to come out and have the success he did both running and throwing the football. And that pitch is taken, and the knee is down for Anon Jefferson. So that play is whistled down, probably lost about a yard or so on that, give him a two-yard loss. Georgia Southern and Texas State have never met before this game. The winner of this game will move on to play Cal Poly next week. Cal Poly beating Montana in Missoula today. So we go from 16 teams down to eight before the day is through. Third and eight for the Eagles. 
They're only one for five on third down today. Foster under tremendous pressure, flagged down, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Varvel, and Daniel Varvel, who played a spectacular first half at his free safety spot, gets the pick, but remember, we have to check the flag. Holding, offense number 64. Penalty is declined, first down. Now the first mistake in this ball game for Jason Foster is a costly one. And he's gonna get pressure up the gut, trying to skate. That's not a good throwing decision. He was looking for McCutcheon. McCutcheon working back towards the quarterback, but as a, a young QB, you have got to let that ball go out of bounds, live to fight another day. And Jason Foster at this point, don't force the ball into coverage, and it could have been a late hit. And this is a big play, Neely for the touchdown score, Damian Williams. And Texas State right back in it with the strike. The interception and then one play later, Barrick Neely. With the touchdown throw, and Texas State down 21-16, will go for two. Watson in motion. Going the other way, and it's zipped too hard, looking for Marquis White, and it's incomplete. So David Bailiff going for two, even though there's lots of time left in this game. But Barrick Neely showing that arm. Damian Williams catches his third touchdown of the game. Varvel's interception set it all up, and it's 21-16. David Bailiff looking on. Damian Williams with his third touchdown catch of the season. But then they go for two points, and they don't get it, and I can't stand it. I think it's way too early. Well, and there's coaches that go both ways on that, but I'm with you on that, Pam. I, I think that, you know, you take the point too early in the game. You don't have to be right on, on the three-point deficit there. And, it often makes you go for two again later on in the football. That's right. You can get yourself buried deeper and deeper as Teddy Kraft is buried around the 17-yard line. This Texas State team fired up as the third quarter gets started. This is a first-round game, Division I AA playoffs between Georgia Southern, a team that has won six national championships in this division, but none since 2000, taking on Texas State as they are the team from the Southland Conference or the in the Southland Conference, and they get into their first 1AA playoff, and it's 21-16 now. Texas State scoring after a Daniel, Daniel Varvel interception. And Damian Williams catching a touchdown pass to get closer. And that is Jermaine Austin who gets the carry and picks up 13 and a first down. Well, with the exception of the breakaway run by Jason Foster, uh, talking to David Bailiff is what Kesnick did at halftime. I think Texas State has played the option well, but they've played the quarterback and the pitch man a little bit better than they've played Jermaine Austin inside. And the fullback has been having some success for Georgia Southern throughout this football game, and that's a cause of concern for Texas State on defense. Austin, 15 carries, 89 yards, and a touchdown. Picked up a first down, and they now sit on the 26. Georgia Southern once led this game 21 to 7. And they go right back to Austin, and he picks up about four. Jason Foster, coming off a year when he played wide receiver. Of course, he was a high school quarterback, but that's not easy getting up to speed. Number one, he had to learn how to throw the football. We've seen his ability and how much he's developed in that department, but also the read. is a, It's a tough read on whether he gives to Jermaine Austin inside or whether he pulls that ball back and takes it out to the perimeter on the offense. And once again, right up the middle is Austin, only picks up a couple of yards. So about a third and five, a third and four coming up. Texas State, very strong up the middle defensively. You see Fred Evans, Defensive Player of the Year in the Southland Conference, also Travis Upshaw. This team has 27 seniors on it. David Bailiff, their head coach, says he absolutely loves them, really gives them credit for hanging in there. 
They had three coaches during a three-year period. This is now Baylor's second season, and he gets them in the playoffs. Third and four, and look at Austin. He just shed a would-be tackler. Another stiff arm, and Jermaine Austin fumbles the ball. Austin with a terrific run, but he fumbled the ball at the end of the play. And they're going to say that he was down. Austin picked up 39 yards, and Georgia Southern hangs on to the football. Well, Jermaine Austin, you can see from his reaction, he almost gave up the ball in scoring position. What a run, though. And again, Jason Foster at quarterback, the read inside, the give. I think it's going to be Gary Shepard, number seven, with the hit. Shook the ball loose, and it sounds like the officiating crew is going to call the ball down on contact. That was exactly the call on the field. Austin right now, 134 yards, his 33rd career 100-yard game, but let's see if this was indeed a no fumble. Let's take a look. Well, that ball came loose very early, and looked like Georgia Southern came up with the fumble, but that ball was loose. Foster hanging on to it with a lot of room, and Foster goes into the end zone for the touchdown. So right after the fumble that was ruled a no fumble, Foster goes 29 yards for the score. Well, Marcelo Estrada, the left guard, is going to get it. Let's go ahead and freeze it right here. Go ahead and freeze it, guys. Look at Estrada working downfield. He sees his quarterback. He can go ahead and run it. And look at the work by the guard down the field to clear the way for Jason Foster. This is an athletic bunch up front for Georgia Southern. Not much size, but they can run. That's one thing the coaches told us about Estrada was how fast he was, and he showed it on that play, clearing it out for Foster. You know, there's no instant replay here in Division I AA. Had there been, perhaps that fumble would have been called a fumble. Instead, Georgia Southern hangs on to it. Foster takes it in, and now the lead's 28-16. Jason Foster with a 29-yard touchdown run makes it 28-16 in favor of Georgia Southern. And the combination of Foster and his fullback, Jermaine Austin, both guys again over 100 yards on the day. Austin was 10th 100-yard game of the season. Jason Foster coming in with his 100-yard game and 20th touchdown. That kick taken up to around the 43-yard line by Luke Bomar, a fullback and a tight end for Texas State. NCAA Championships on ESPN. This Division I AA football first round game is brought to you by McDonald's. Spectacular day here in San Marcos, Texas. We are about a half an hour south of Austin on I-35. And Texas State now trailing for Georgia Southern. Coming back, a quick strike. As they go 87 yards in that last drive at just over two minutes. Neely coming, trying to come back, and that pass is incomplete as he was going for Marquis White, but Tariq Muhammad was step for step with him. Uh, Tariq Muhammad did a real nice job of keeping his depth. And when you're a quarterback and you're looking down the field on a post route or a go route, you try to read the relationship of that safety to your wide receiver. And Tariq Muhammad, who had himself a great year in this defense, a guy who's really developed at the safety position, played that well, had good depth, and made a nice play on the football. Muhammad, a pure walk-on on this team, and now as a senior, Always in the right place at the right time. Made a terrific play on White, who goes up and brings it in. Looking like a basketball player at 6'7". White, with his sixth catch of the day, went up, tipped it to himself, and kept his foot in bounds. Yeah, you'll never see this in the box score tomorrow, but Marquis White really helped out his quarterback on this catch. This ball's delivered high, 6'7 frame, and how about the footwork to get that right foot down? That's a tremendous play by Marquis White. And and we hear a lot about the prospects of Barrett Neely, Pam, but I think Marquis White is a guy that NFL scouts 
scouts will be looking at. He's a guy who says that basketball has indeed helped him with his footwork as a wide receiver. He starts on the basketball team here at Texas State. Five yards, now third and five, and that pass is complete. Or is it? Nope, now it's incomplete. The umpire had a better look at it from in front as he was going for Tyrone Scott. Yeah, and that's not a real solid play by Tyrone Scott. I mean, Barrick Neely is gonna look to Scott, and Scott's on a curl route here, and this is very nice ball placement. I mean, he puts the ball in there right about where it needs to be, and Scott has gotta be tough enough and physical enough to keep that separation from the defensive back and hanging on his back and, and make that play. That was a nice throw by Neely. But instead, it comes to Corey Eloff's third punt of the day. That's a high hanger, and it hits off the leg of a Texas State player. And Texas State saying they should have the football, but I don't think it touched anybody with Georgia Southern. Well, it looked to me like it touched a Texas State player. It was Varvel who it hit. Of course, they're trying to buy a call. And again, there is no instant replay like we have in Division 1A here in Division 1AA. Well, it doesn't look like there's anybody in the group that's very you know, demonstrative about seeing that play clearly. It doesn't look like there's an official that's stepping up and saying, I clearly saw what happened on that play. It'd be a tough break to give the ball back to Texas State with the indecision that's going on. is a Big Sky Conference crew. John Maloney, the referee, with his back to us and talking it over with his crew, trying to get this right. Obviously, a huge call. But from our vantage point up here, it hit Varvel only and did not hit a Georgia Southern player. Well, I think they're trying to decide, too, as a the player. The punt was buffed by the receivers and recovered by the kickers. First and ten. Oh. Well, they're calling it a muff, and a muff is... There's an inability to handle the punt by the receiving team. And Mike Seawalk's not excited about it. You see the fair catch call by Teddy Kraft. Oh, that's a great call. That is a great call by the officiating crew. And I think they were trying to sort out whether a player was blocked in into one of the receiving team, Georgia Southern. Is yeah, that Patrick Bowen? Might have been Patrick Bowen. And Mike Seawalk is going to try to talk to this officiating crew, but you see right here, I think that's that's Bowen, and the ball's going to hit him in his left thigh. Ah, wow, that's that's Richard Murphy, special teams player for Georgia Southern, number 83. That is a bad break for Mike Seawalk at Georgia Southern, but that's one of the risks, and that's why you have a call. You know, punt receiving teams have calls. They have a code word that they yell when the ball's gonna be coming down and not be fielded by the punt return man. There's Murphy trying to explain to his teammates what happened. That's, you know, Pam, I think that's just a dose of bad luck. Wow, and that was, and again, from our vantage point up here, it looked like it hit Varvel, but Murphy was right there, and you saw also the craft was had the, the arm up for the fair catch, and the ball never got to him. You know, Seawalk may be talking to this officiating crew about whether his punt return man had an opportunity to cleanly feel that punt. And that would be a good point. Snap bobbled momentarily by Neely, and he takes off. This kid can run, and he's showing it right now. Slides in safely at the 15-yard line for a Texas State first down. Well, isn't that characteristic of a big game, a playoff game, a game when a team's trying to clinch a championship at the end of the regular season? The ball takes funny hops in big football games. Now, Murphy was just downfield trying to block for his punt return man on the play, trying to do his job, stay in front, and the football found his thigh pass. And he is talking about it over on the sideline. And right now, we're talking about a first and 10 from the 15 for Texas State. And way off sides, you see if he was drawn. His flags are down all over the place. 
Offense for one. Five yard penalty, still first down. That is the second delay against Texas State today. Uh, it's a smart play as a defensive player. You can see that 25 second clock down at the other side of the field. And when it's down ticking inside one second, you know you can time the snap because you're either going to be in the backfield or you're going to lay a game call, which was the case. Second delay of game call against the Bobcats makes it first and 15 now from the 20. Blitz coming, they pick it up. Neely with all the time in the world, and it's picked off. He threw it into double coverage, and A.J. Bryant gets it at the goal line for Georgia Southern. Bryant with his fourth interception of the year and 10th in his great career for the Eagles. So A.J. Bryant, the senior free safety, Neely, flirting with danger, throwing it into double coverage. Turnover, Georgia Southern has the ball and the lead. The squeak of the sheen leading Texas State 28 to 16. A.J. Bryant coming up with his fourth pick of the season to snuff out a Texas State threat. And Barrett Neely talking to the folks upstairs as he has thrown his sixth interception of the season. That's the second turnover of the game for the Bobcats. The Eagles have two as well as Austin gets it up to the 10. Let's take a look now at the Home Depot coaching adjustments. And Mike Seawalk, he's a head coach, and he's really, all plays go through him, and the adjustments he makes, he's watching on the sidelines, and Jason Foster has to make the read inside. And he reads a defensive lineman, the interior lineman, gives the ball to Jermaine Austin. This time, fullback's taken away. And Jason Foster keeps and makes it count. And both of those guys are over 100 yards on the ground today. Stopped short of the first down. Foster, the quarterback, keeps it this time. Picks up six. So a third down coming up for the Eagles. And as we saw in the Home Depot coaching adjustments, so much of the game and so much of this offense over the last two decades are the coaches on the sideline. In this case, Mike Seawalk for Georgia Southern. They're watching all game long the way the See the way the defense is reacting to the dive, to the quarterback, the pitch man, and then they make adjustments throughout the football game. Now on third and one, great surge up the middle, but not enough as Austin was able to pick up the first down. David Simmons among those coming in and plugging up the hole, but too little too late. Well, and this is where if you're David Bayleff in your Texas State, you start worrying a little bit about Georgia Southern's ability to move the clock and, and occupy time and possession. You didn't figure you'd be trailing by 12 points here, Pam, and more than midway through the third quarter, and you, most teams you wouldn't be worried at this point in the football game, but you start to look at the clock when it's Georgia Southern on offense. And they now are plus four, four minutes in the time of possession race as Brandon Andrews carries it, but another flag is down on the field. Illegal formation, only six men on the line of scrimmage, offense, five-yard penalty, remains first down. That has happened a couple of times today, another illegal formation against Seawalk's offense. Oh, sorry, Pam. Sorry. I, you know, you, we look at the time of possession, and, and that's pretty good for Texas State. I mean, usually Georgia Southern, they have a bit more of an advantage, and David Bailiff talked to us about not getting that many opportunities on offense. Maybe only 50-55 offensive plays. Texas State now with 39 offensive plays to 44 for Georgia Southern. So after the illegal formation, now first and 15 from the 13. And the pitch taken by Marquise Maynard. And he finds a lot of room and then cuts back. But now they're saying he ran out of bounds around the 37-yard line. Maynard was being chased down anyway, but he did step out of bounds. Still 24 yards and a first down. The slot backs for Georgia Southern have not been a big factor in this football game. But as you can see, they don't only run the ball on the option. And the Eagles like to get, he just barely stepped on the sideline there. Maynard would have turned this into a much bigger run. 
Looked like the left foot right there just beyond the first down stakes. Georgia Southern's not afraid to utilize those slot backs on sweeps and specialty plays, not, not just the option. Four carries for 32 yards for Maynard. That one alone was 24. Austin go right back to him, and he bends his way close to the 40-yard line, picks up a couple. Travis Upshaw coming in to make the stop. Upshaw, the senior from Mansfield, Texas, and he's about 50 pounds heavier than he was last year, says he's playing just as fast, and he's a guy who was thinking about going to junior college, but then was offered a partial scholarship to come here to Texas State, and he took it. It's a guy, one of the guys who has played for three head coaches here and uh, is having the time of his life as a senior. Yeah, he's a pleasure to visit with yesterday, and he sure does run well for carrying that much weight on his frame. A couple of big guys in the middle, and there's a big first down run for Brandon Andrews, the senior from Swainsboro, Georgia. His brother also playing on this team, Raja. Now, Brandon Andrews doesn't get as many opportunities, opportunities as he'd like playing behind Jermaine Austin, but he'd start for a lot of teams at the Division 1A level. He's a very capable fullback. And with that run, Georgia Southern now over 300 yards rushing as another three yards for Andrews. Georgia Southern team averages 389 rush yards per game. That is tops in Division I AA, and right now they're at 313 and counting. Well, this program has been tops in Division I AA football for a long time. You know, they, they have set the standard. Six national titles, and look at the play selection. So of those five pass plays, the first two went for touchdowns. Foster tossing touchdown passes, and that time he holds onto it and spins his way for a five-yard gain. Melvin Weber making the stop. 44 runs, now 45 run plays to five pass attempts in this football game. So you, know, you hear so many offenses and offensive coordinators, Pam, talk about offensive balance. We want to be balanced. Georgia Southern doesn't want to be balanced. They want to dominate on the ground. And then when you get those safeties up near the line of scrimmage, all of a sudden there's a wide receiver running 10, 12 yards behind the defense, and you hit him with the big play in the pass game. And then third down, third and two, as they go to Austin. And he appears to have the first down for Georgia Southern. Well, as Austin powers his way to another run inside. The clock continues to be a factor, Pam. You had to get a reference into one of your favorite films before the year was out. <laughs> Jermaine Austin is, uh, is just a little bit taller than Mini-Me, too, isn't he? He's listed again at 5'8", and he admits he's, he's kind of not. But what, he, another, another fun visit we had with him yesterday, he and looked, just solid muscle. He looked the starting backfield for this outfit. You know, Foster's 5'9". Austin's listed at 5'8", but I doubt he's 5'7". And Austin, we just get word from the truck, he's moved from 11th all-time in Division I AA to 6th all-time. And there are some, some big rushers on that list, and he's done that work today yep. to move up the charts. And look who's number one, Adrian Peterson, who went to Georgia, Georgia Southern, now playing for the Bears, had a 120-yard game for the Bears a couple weeks ago against the Niners. Peterson setting the standard in Division I AA rushing as Foster hangs onto it and doesn't get much. Yeah, and there's some big names on that list. I mean, the NFL is packed with a number of players across the board from the Division I AA level. You remember this guy, don't you, Pam? Hey, Adrian Peterson, this was spectacular. 247 yards in the championship win over Youngstown State. Three touchdowns, and that's just good work. That was in 1999. As they smoked Youngstown State 59-24, now he's running for the Bears. Foster hangs onto it. He's in the clear, and Foster keeps his feet and scores another touchdown. 36 yards. <laughs> So Foster with his second touchdown run to go along with his two touchdown throws today. And the lead has ballooned to 
Georgia Southern coming in. They are seventh in the country according to the polls. Texas State fifth in the country and the fourth seed in this championship. But they are now down 35-16. And look at the day Jason Foster, the first year starting quarterback, has had for the Eagles. Let's go back to his latest work. And watch Jason Foster. I mean, he's going to read the defensive tackle, come inside here. He's going to go ahead and keep. And if you blink just for a second, you'll miss him. Now, Pam, when we talked to Mike Seawalk, the head coach for Georgia Southern, he said one of the big problems that defenses have against our quarterback and our option attack, it's tough for them, number one, to get up to game speed. They can't get that look in practice from their scout team during the week. But also, when the game time comes, defenses and defenders tend to take the wrong angles, the wrong pursuit angles. They underestimate just how good this offense is and just how quick guys like Jason Foster are when they execute the offense. Incredible how fast he is. Foster with two rushing touchdowns today. He's the only player in one double A this season to run for a touchdown in every game. And now that he has scored rushing touchdowns in this game, he has he's 12 for 12, and that is a new one double A season single record or season single record, I meant to say. So, and again, this kid is just a first year starter. He was a punt returner, a kick returner, wide receiver last year, and boy, he's a heck of a quarterback in this option offense. Well, and he you know he comes behind some great quarterbacks that have run this offense. Chaz Williams, they graduated a year ago, but names like Ham and Revere. I just, he is going to be a bear to defense <laughs> before it's all over here at Georgia Southern. Remember, he's only a sophomore, and the Texas State had high expectations today, and he is just flat taking control of this football game away from the Bobcats. Southern Conference record, 12 straight games, running for a touchdown. He has two up today and has thrown for two. Morris Crosby takes a chance. Taking it out from one yard deep, but he is tackled down around the 14-yard line as we head back for a Matt Weiner update. Matt. Hi, Pan. Thanks very much. South Florida still on track for a BCS berth out of the Big East if they can beat UConn today, but they're trailing. Kyle Bronson cuts a little closer. 42-yard field goal cuts the lead to five. How about that? South Florida, as Matt said, needed to win that game. That's a great story down there. Jim Levitt building that program. I believe, what, their ninth season of existence. And they're looking at a possible BCS bid, but they got to win today before they even think about West Virginia now. So people are saying, hey, South Florida is going to be in the B. What? That? What? <laughs> South Florida playing in Tampa. They used the Buccaneers Stadium down there. Texas State, 35-16 deficit. Barrick Neely has got to get it going soon. And he hangs on to it and picks up about five yards. Jason Earwood with the tackle. This is first round action in the Division I AA playoffs, the championships, Bobcat Stadium in San Marcos, Texas. Texas State in its first ever Division I AA playoff. Georgia Southern has had a terrific performance from its sophomore quarterback, Jason Foster. He has run for a couple of touchdowns and also thrown for a couple of touchdowns. And both he and Jermaine Austin are over 100 yards on the ground. So it's a hole that Texas State has to dig out of. And that pass is caught. Tyrone Scott going down and getting it for the first down at the 39. Rico Zachary on the coverage. That's good for 20 yards. Well, Scott didn't make the play earlier in the half for his quarterback, but this time, he makes a big time play on the dig route, the deep crossing route. And the Bobcats are gonna need some vertical throws and they're gonna have to get the ball down the field. About this time in the game, trailing 35 to 16, you, you stop worrying about establishing the run and now you gotta come up with some plays down the football field. And this Texas State offense certainly is capable of coming from behind, but it's not gonna happen that way. On the blitz, John Mooring just came right up the gut and sacked Barrick Neely. Mooring's second sack of the season. And take a look at Mooring coming right off his inside linebacking position. He doesn't finish the play. Sherrod Taylor takes care of those honors, but Mooring really set things up with his pressure. A delayed blitz. They cross the linebackers inside. 
Texas State has not given up a lot of sacks on the season. In fact, that's only the 10th time that Neely's gone down this season. So now second and 20. Nothing to do but throw. Neely escapes, and a very good comeback. Marquis White coming back nicely on the ball and is stopped about a yard short of the first down. He has seven catches today. Now, Marquis White is really going to make a nice play outside. And Barrick Neely, now he saves this offense with his feet. Only sacked eight times this year, but how about that throw on the move? And then Mr. Mooring, number 47, comes in and makes sure that Marquis White pays for that reception. White with seven catches, that equals his career high. The senior from Long Beach, seven catches for 89 yards. Third and one. Morris Brothers in the backfield next to Neely, but he's gonna throw on third and one, and successfully! Justin Williams in a foot race. He is dragged down inside the five yard line by Rico Zachary, but on third and one, they go for the big pass play and they get 48 yards. Rico Zachary, the safety, let's go ahead and run it. We're gonna get a freeze right here. Okay, Zachary was playing inside. He looked to the flat and then allowed the receiver to get behind him. And Justin Williams just on a crisp inside slant and he ain't caught Zachary getting a little greedy trying to jump the pass in the flat. So now first and goal. Neely in the end zone is a man wide open. It's Chase Watson. Watson gets the touchdown. Six-yard drive, and Wasson, who is the backup quarterback on this team, catches his first touchdown of his young career. Stan Jones in to add the extra point, and that makes it 35-23. Lawson really has turned out to be quite a secret weapon for this team. You see he's lined up in the right slot. He's just going to run a little corner out, and that's a bust. And a bust in the secondary for Georgia Southern. And a bust for our viewers means that somebody missed their assignment. And that was a mix-up in the secondary. And how about the drive put together by Barrett Neely? A great catch by Justin Williams on the inside route. They catch Rico Zachary overplaying the route underneath on the slant route, the big play that got him in position for the touchdown, and Wasson is having himself a game. How about Wasson? Folks know him in this part of the country. Went to Carroll High School in South Lake, Texas. Was the 2002 Class 5A Player of the Year for 16-0 state champion team. And right now he is the heir apparent to Barrick Neely, the senior quarterback, who did engineer a nice drive. Yeah, it wasn't only a nice drive. That was that was a must-have drive. If Texas State doesn't score on that possession, I think they're really in 9-1-1 mode and maybe in danger of, of not having much of a chance to come back. But that touchdown changes things. 12-point lead, and we're still late in the third quarter. David Bailiff and his team knows it and maintain touch with this Georgia Southern offense. The question, Pam, can they solve this spread option and can they make a stop or two here in the fourth quarter? Give the offense an opportunity. Georgia Southern with 493 total yards as Kraft decides to take it out of the end zone and then is enveloped by a whole pride of Bobcats. Pride of Lions, so I guess a pride of Bobcats. Yeah, that, that'll work, that's, that's nice. Works for me. <laughs> you know there's more football coming your way. Marcus Vick and the Virginia Tech Hokies try and clinch a spot in the ACC championship game, but they have to beat North Carolina. Looking for the upset. The Hokies will face Florida State on December 3rd in Jacksonville. College football primetime presented by Polaroid on ESPN tonight at 7.45 Eastern. Carolina and tech also available in high definition on ESPN HD. Call your cable operator or satellite provider today, and ESPN.com is always there with more information. If there's one thing we found out at Feast Week, there's a number of teams that are playing like they don't want to get into those championship yeah. games. Boy, backing in as Colorado is backed into the Big 12 championship game. 
Foster meets up with a lot of guys as we go back to Matt Weiner. All right, Band Brothers Sports Center in-game updates Syracuse and Louisville. Paul Chiara for the Cues and the Orange hanging around at Louisville at Papa John Stadium within a touchdown in the third quarter. Well, Matt, that would be quite a win for Syracuse. It has been a very dismal season. That offense struggling. They're one and nine, the Orange. They played Virginia tough early this season. We did that game. Virginia had to win on our last second field goal, but since then it's been slim pickings as Foster goes down, about five yards short of the first down. Louisville will conclude its regular season next week against Connecticut, which is right now upsetting South Florida. Well, and you have some quality players playing inside for Texas State defensively as we look at Mike Seawalk and his ongoing evaluation of what's going on in the field. But you know, this, this defense is going to have to make some adjustments, Pam, in the fourth quarter to get some stops against the Eagles. That's right, because Jason Foster has been almost a one-man wrecking crew, running for a couple of touchdowns, throwing for a couple of more. We head to the fourth quarter, Georgia Southern up 35-23. Mike Seawalk pondering right now. He's got 15 minutes left to go, and if his team can hang on to this lead, they will advance on to the quarterfinals of the Division I AA Championships, a 16-team field to start with. Foster pitching it out to Jefferson, and he appears to be short of the first down. Marcus O'Neill, boy, this Texas State defense really starting to lay some licks on Georgia Southern. They have marked him about a yard short of the first down. Now, Coach Seawalk likes to go for fourth down, but I don't know, fourth and one here from the 23, that would be a huge gamble. Yeah, not with a 12-point lead in, in the fourth quarter. Right. Mike Seawalk's going to go for fourth and one inside his own 25-yard line. That's probably going to be early first half, if that at all. Dan Jordan in for his third punt, only 29 and 27 so far. This one much better with the hang time as Morris Crosby lets it roll. And it will lose steam around the 23-yard line. Great punt this time for Jordan at 56 yards. Here are your brackets. You take a look at the upper portion. And New Hampshire with an easy and impressive win over Colgate. Cal Poly winning in Missoula, which is never easy. And I can't help but think, what if you had, you know, LSU and USC right here? And then you had maybe Texas and Penn State and, I don't know, West Virginia and Miami or Va Tech, you know, down there playing Ohio State. That would be a heck of a deal at the I'd Division I what, level. But, you know, no playoffs, obviously, in 1A. And this is the second half of the bracket. You see some of the teams that have gotten through, culminating a week from Friday night with the championship game in Chattanooga. ESPN, ESPN2, ESPNU all over these championships. As Marquis White makes the catch, we get you caught up with Matt Weiner. Matt. Pam, it's the 100th edition of the Bedlam game. Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. Some awfully good running backs in this series. Adrian Peterson is one of them. 84 yards. He's got 144 on the day, and the Sooners have a three-touchdown lead headed to the fourth. Thank you. Thank you. That's the other, the other Adrian Peterson. Yeah, but the Georgia Southern fans are going, oh, there's another one? They're both pretty good. Yeah, they're both. They're both pretty talented. Adrian Peterson from Georgia Southern, the all-time rushing leader in Division I AA ball, is Chase Wasson, the touchdown catcher. Just gets that for a minimal game. T.J. Rutledge with a big smile, the senior from Kennesaw, Georgia, coming in to make the stop. Now, Barrick Neely, we've heard a lot about him and the season he's had and the yards that he's piled up with his arm and his feet, but he is really going to have to be on top of his game here in the fourth quarter. And, you know, on a second down pass, looking to a receiver that's picking up no yards or one yard, and you can see defenders behind your receivers and your backs out of the backfield. And Neely's going to have to be real smart about the way he operates in this passing offense. That's our first time out of the half. David Bailiff takes the timeout for Texas State. This is a huge play coming up. Obviously got to keep the drive going. Third and one from their 31 when we return. Coach Bailiff calls for the timeout and gets it. 
after the timeout, Texas State third and one from the 31. They trail this game by 12. Eric Neely hands it off. He hands it off to Douglas Sherman. And he did not get it. I don't like that play call. And you got Barrick Neely at the least there. I mean, it's, your season is close to being on the line. You know, third and short. And they may go for it in fourth down here. But I think you keep the ball in Barrick Neely's hands in a critical third down situation like we just saw there. Give him a run pass opportunity. I don't think you go one dimensional there. And now they're forced to go for it. And they're going to empty out the backfield. Now fourth and one. Sherman still in the backfield as he joins Neely to help block, and he completes the pass. A tippy-toe job by Marquis White on the sidelines. Nine passes now for White. None bigger than that one. I think it's safe to say that David Bailiff is relieved, the head coach for Texas State. And this is what we're talking about here, run-pass option, sprinting. There, Neely out to his left. And a pretty nice throw. Outside pocket catch. Neely has now completed seven straight passes for 102 yards since he threw an interception at the goal line back in the third quarter. They got to get things going and obviously have to score a couple of more times to keep their season going. Neely now flushed out of the pocket. Has to hang on to it and he will. And will pick up a first down as he skips out right near the first down marker. Picked up 11. Let's go back to Matt Weiner. Pam, Florida, Florida State rivalry game, senior day in the swamp, and things are going to happen occasionally. Chris Leak rolls out one way and threads it back to his tackle, Randy Hand, showing the hands on senior day. A couple yard gain led to a field goal. It is up 20 0. Little big guy, Hand, getting that pass play from Chris Leak. Here we have a Division I AA championship game. First round action, Georgia Southern and Texas State. And Neely today, over 100 yards on the ground after that 11 yard run. That's the quarterback. So both quarterbacks are over 100 yards on the ground and Neely's gonna pad that statistic and wisely dives forward 15 more yards for Barrett. Now, this is the first time we've seen Barrick Neely with the naked eye. And I can see why at the NFL level, there's going to be a lot of interest. And when we set up this drive, we said he's going to have to make sharp decisions. He's going to have to pull the ball down at times. And he's made two brilliant runs on the last two plays. It's going to have to be a mix of pass and run by Barrick Neely. Texas State is going to get this done. Look at this passing and rushing them. Pretty impressive. Over 400 total yards for Neely, passing and running. Another first down. Neely going down the sideline and stretching for the ball is Clellan Cook. And that falls incomplete. He was locked up pretty well there with A.J. Bryant. Yeah, Bryant is a nice coverage ability back in your secondary to have working from that free safety position. You know, as you said, Pam, he's, they call him a windshield wiper, and that means he can cover from sideline to sideline. That's great ability to play the ball in the air and held off the receiver to the inside. Then it's just an ordinary incomplete pass. Second and 10 now from the 40 for the Bobcats. Blitz coming again, they pick it up, and Neely throws it into double coverage as he's again looking for White. But that's incomplete. Let's go down the field now for a report from Quint Kessnick. Quint. Pam, keep in mind this Texas State program experienced losing seasons 11 of the last 12 years. So when Coach David, uh, David Bailiff took the spot, took the job, he made a phone call to Mac Brown of Texas. Remember, Brown had coached a year at Appalachian State. Brown spread everything on his desk. Bailiff went in his office, basically showed him the blueprint to how to develop a program. And the thing that we noticed being here on campus was how everything uh, here is, is about family. It's a really a, a family atmosphere they've created. That's right, Quentin. We talked to the players yesterday, and that's what they all mentioned was how much closer this team is. Bailiff. 
as that pass is complete for a first down to Tyrone Scott. Bailiff tough in the academic standards, kicked a couple players off the team who didn't go to class, and now maybe that cohesion can, can get them back and get them a comeback win today. Merrick Neely has shown us his accuracy, his ability to move. He makes great decisions, and now we get a taste of his arm strength. That was about a 38-yard ball across the field, and you know, when, when NFL people sit down and they evaluate quarterbacks and they see that type of velocity and accuracy down the field, they say this is a kid they can work with at the next level. And you can all see why Mel Kuyper, our draft expert, says he's one of the best seniors coming out. Now he's going for the touchdown and he has it. A perfect strike to Damian Williams. Williams' second touchdown catch of the day. Neely with a 26-yard throw to Damian Williams, who caught a 31-yard touchdown earlier in this game, back in the third quarter. And here come the Bobcats. Only down five. Damian Williams, one of the so-called twin towers with Morris Crosby. They're both 5'9", they're both talented. And Williams has his second touchdown catch of the day, and we got a ball game. 18 point Georgia Southern lead has been cut now to five. Barrett Neely has just completed a 26 yard touchdown pass to Damian Williams. And look at the quarterback comparison. Neely and Foster both doing it on the ground and through the air. And Texas State, their first ever Division I AA playoff appearance since they came to this division 20 years ago, but that's a bad mistake by Stan Jones, who kicks it out of bounds. So Georgia Southern has the option of taking it at the 35. Kick out of bounds. Receivers will take the ball at the 35-yard line. Let's go back to the touchdown, the latest throw from Neely. And yeah, this is Williams inside. He's just going to run a route right up the seam. And let's go ahead and freeze it right here. You got a safety behind him, and then you got a linebacker over here, Mooring, and Williams is just gonna run by both of them. And the ball's placed perfectly. He's got a little air under it. That was a big time ball from Derek Neely. Jermaine Austin picking up a couple on first down as we get you up to date with another uh, another update, of course, from Matt Weiner. Go, Matt, please. Sam, it's getting late and lopsided in the swamp. Leon Washington gets the carry for the Seminoles, and he lost the football. Brandon Seiler hops on it. Seventh fumble recovery of the season, and that led to this. Chris Leak, play action. Dallas Baker, touchdown, 27-0 Gators. Woo. Florida State already knowing that they are in the ACC championship game, but huge rivalry game, and they're getting thumped. Yeah, they're playing like they, they're already in the game. Jason Foster runs a lot of yards to pick up a couple as he's taken down at the 40. And you look at the play action. Yeah, Georgia Southern has so many looks. And then when they're in trouble, Jason Foster has the feet to escape. And he's picked up a lot of his yards, went over 1,300 yards this year, but he's picked up a lot of his yards in broken field situations, like on that play. And also in that play, saw big old Ramel Borner, number 60 at 304, chugging and running right along with the quarterback. And now the pitch to Maynard, and this Texas State defense really starting to rise to the occasion. Well, this is a huge play, and maybe the biggest cheer in San Marcos this afternoon from the Texas State faithful to get a stop. And what a play. Looked like Simmons coming in and bringing the helmet in a hurry. And this crowd knows that that was a huge play because you don't get this Georgia Southern offense off the field very frequently. Now Texas State will have a chance to take the lead. Dan Jordan for a second straight punt. The last one was a 56-yard thumper. And 
this one will be fair caught by Morris Crosby at the 16. So Texas State has the football and an opportunity to take the lead. NCAA. So Texas State, one point down, 19 points in the third quarter. Now with the football from the 16. 8.16 left to go. And they are only down by five. Neely, plenty of time. But then the, he loses the ball, but his knee was clearly down, and Neely appears to be shaken up. He did lose the football, but the ball was whistled down. And they're going to have to come out and take a look at the star quarterback. Well, he had escaped the pocket and was picking up some positive yardage. Big Larry Beard, number 55, reached out. And that might have been the horse collar tackle that they've outlawed at the NFL level. Roy Williams made popular just up by 35. Derek Neely's going to escape. He's made some nice runs here in the second half, and that was the old horse collar tackle by Larry Beard, number 55. And that is legal at the college level. So Neely goes out, as you saw that his right leg crumbled just a little bit as he was horse collared, and that means Chase Watson, who has been playing wide receiver, Timeout. Comes in Texas to play State. quarterback. He That's has their second timeout of the half. As Texas State takes the timeout, Watson has thrown 11 passes on the season. And as Neely gets looked over, Texas State down to only one timeout. Timeout. Texas State gave Barrett Neely the opportunity to come back into the game instead of Watson playing quarterback, and he has done just that. Yeah, and our on the field reporter, Quint Kesnick, you know, noticed too, they, they might have had too many men in the huddle so they killed two birds with one stone there i think it was a smart timeout they're a little discombobulated but texas state now down to only one timeout and douglas sherman doesn't see a whole lot of running room in fact just a yard so a third and seven will be coming up this is a first round game in division one double a in the championships between texas state and georgia southern georgia southern's won six championships texas state in these Championships for the very first time. It's only the second year that Texas State has been Texas State. It used to be, it used to be named known by many other things. Southwest Texas State. Barrett Neely, the quarterback, has had a heck of a game, four touchdowns, but right now facing a huge third and six. With his team down five. And he connects once again. He hits Marquis White. And White breaks away all the way down to the 22-yard line. 58 yards, what a huge third down play. Barrick Neely has been all as advertised and more. And look at how easy the delivery is. He made that throw look simple. And a nice route by Marquis White. He's gonna drive, establish a vertical threat, nice sharp, crisp precision route inside the ball was delivered perfectly on time and then marky white at six seven frame and his ability to move the football after the catch marky white career high 10 catches for career high 157 yards first down nearly pump fake holds on to it and is stopped a couple of yards short of the first time first down jack sherman in pursuit Clock stops with 6.50 left. You remember a quarterback out of UNLV went on to play for the Eagles by the name of Cunningham? Randall? Remember he used to fake throws beyond the line of scrimmage. Yeah, remember Cunningham would have the ball three, four yards down the line, beyond the line of scrimmage, and still fake <laughs> linebackers with the throw, and that's exactly what Derek Neely did. I have been extremely impressed with this young man in the second half and he's getting nice work from his offensive line and his receivers on the outside and he sets up a second and long one from the 14. sherman with the handoff and he pulls his way for a bobcat first down jason earwood making the stop but it's another first down well and you have to hand it to David Bailey and his co-offensive coordinators Tom Herman and Blake Miller. At times they've been stubborn running the football here in the second half. They created a third and five situation before the a big pass play to the Marquis White on this drive. But 
you know, they've been doing just enough between the tackles, Pam, to keep this Georgia Southern defense honest. Again, this was a 35 to 16 game with 420 left in the third quarter. Now Texas State trying to score its third straight touchdown and take the lead. Neely in the end zone as a man wide open, and they do take the lead. Damian Williams, third touchdown of the day, and the comeback for the Bobcats. more wide open than Damian Williams. Has a 26-yard touchdown catch, a 31-yard touchdown catch. And that one for 11 yards. Varick Neely showed real confidence in his throwing arm on that touchdown. You know, some quarterbacks would loop that ball in the end zone with an open receiver, and Neely just came on the roll to his right, just flicked that ball into the end zone. Perfect ball. His work on these last three drives, I, I mean, this quarterback is a guy who be, could be playing for a lot of teams at the Division I level. Going for two to make it a three-point lead, and he gets it. Marquis White with the catch. And Barrick Neely, a career day, 400 yards passing, and he has led this team back from 19 points down late in the third quarter. Nearly just a flick of his wrist finds Williams for the third time today. And then you go to the big guy, 6'7", Marquis White, and the lead is three. <laughs> Texas State has just run off 22 straight points, all of them coming from the arm of Barrett Neely. Three touchdown passes and the two-point conversion to make it a three-point lead over Georgia Southern. The Eagles, Teddy Kraft, brings it out close to the 23-yard line. But this has been a Barrett Neely day. Well, and watch this bunch. Go ahead and run it and bring them right here. Now, let's freeze it right there. A bunch group right in the middle. Marquis White's going to run a post corner route and the three receiver bunch with the motion creates confusion check that that's Damian Williams Marquis White made the catch on the two-point conversion but Williams lined up in the slot three receiver bunch formation creates confusion for the Eagles and again what a throw by Derek Neal nearly 400 yards passing today as Jefferson gets the pitch and picks up about six yards nearly for the day just you know 400 yards passing is good enough but remember he has 126 yards on the ground but this is like reggie bush vince young kind of stuff five over 500 yards of offense for him yeah, it's, it's, it's really impressive and you know some quarterbacks can get it done with their arms and their feet but with the game on the line trailing by three touchdowns three consecutive drives wow now it's up to the bobcat defense and they rise to the occasion on that play as Jason Foster, the quarterback, is taken down quickly. Nick Clark getting in on. Well, and this offense, you know, it's not the type of offense that's equipped to come from behind. And the granted, they're only facing a three-point deficit, but the way the Texas State is handling the football right now, and Mike Seawalk's gonna have to treat this drive as a as a must-have drive. And Foster with some pretty good numbers of his own to match up with Derek Neal. But now facing a huge third and three. Foster hangs on to it himself, and he's not going to get it. Not even close. Jeremy Castillo, the junior from Corsicana, Texas, making the stop. Well, this Georgia Southern offense has now bogged down. They have had to punt the last two times they've had the football. And now, David, it's fourth and three, and they got to go. Well, and, and we've talked about Mike Seawalk's propensity to go for it on fourth down. The way that Texas State's moving the football at this point in the game, I think this is the right decision. So here's your ball game as we approach the 420 mark. 
and Foster's gonna throw. A busted play, he goes down, and Texas State gets the football. A great comeback by this offense, but this defense has now come up huge in three straight series. Well, Jason Foster had time. It was the right play design. But he didn't get a lot of help from his receivers. And you know, I, I didn't see much of a vertical route among those wide receivers down the field. It looked like Foster had plenty of time off play action, just couldn't find a receiver down the field. You got to give Texas State in their secondary a lot of credit. So the Bobcats take over. And Sherman with a nice first down run. He is heading towards the end zone and just scooches out of bounds at the three. So Sherman almost breaks one for a touchdown. Well, the Bobcats, they smell blood. That ball being punched up inside by Sherman. He's a scat back type runner with a deceiving ability to break tackles, and he broke a couple big tackles on that run. 25 yards, and now Jolly keeping those legs moving, but is stopped about a yard short of the first down. Mike Seawalk wants a timeout as he sees the game, and since this is a playoff game, his season start to tick away. Georgia Southern had a, well, they had a 19-point lead late in the third quarter. And it looked like Georgia Southern was getting ready to put this game away. Georgia Southern now with two timeouts remaining. It was 35 to 16 with 420 left. Jason Foster, a 36 yard touchdown run, capping off a 93 yard drive. But then Texas State came back, an 86 yard drive, a 78 yard drive, and an 84 yard drive all capped off by Barrett Neely touchdown throws. Let's take a look at the quarters here. Texas State actually scored the first time they had the ball, went 80 yards, and then Georgia Southern ran off those three straight touchdowns in the first quarter. And boy, what a comeback here by the Bobcats. Well, this would be a great football game in any setting, but how about when you put it in a playoff format and both teams are playing for the right to move on or go home. Then all of a sudden, it becomes really entertaining. And, and that's what I love about getting a chance to do a Division I AA playoff game. It's for keeps. You know, this isn't a bowl game where the teams shake hands and say, hey, great, that was a fun game, and the fans got to travel, and everybody had a good time. This is to move on and stay alive. Yeah, this is football. It's competition. And Jolly trying to go upstairs. But A.J. Bryant jumping into the middle of the pile, and Seawalk will burn his second timeout. And an interesting move there by Mike Seawalk. He's going to choose to use his timeouts early here. And, you know, it's all about the goal line stand and whether you can stop this Texas State defense from scoring. Because if they get into the end zone, it becomes a monumental task to come back. You're going to be looking at a 10-point, potentially a 9-point lead if they don't convert on the extra point. But that's a, obviously a two-score game and takes an offense like Georgia Southern's even further out of their comfort zone. A touchdown would be devastating, obviously. If for some reason, they can hold them to the field goal, then at least they would have a shot to tie it. Division I Women's Soccer Championship start this Friday at 4.30 Eastern on ESPN2 and ESPNU. For a preview of both Women's College Cup semifinal games, visit NCAAsports.com, the official online home for all 88 NCAA championships. North Carolina, for a change, will not be there, upset by Florida State. Here's a huge play, third and goal. And a lot of huge plays here in the fourth quarter, and Barrett Neely and company have just about made them all. Daniel Jolly, the tailback, gets it, and he goes into the end zone. And that 
probably ices this football game for Texas State. Jolly went to Colorado. He's from San Antonio, said he didn't like the snow there. He was cold. He didn't like the fact that they wanted him to play fullback. And he's come here to Texas State and gets the clinching touchdown. I'm sure he didn't like the fact he wasn't getting much playing time, too. <laughs> that, that'll do it. That'll make him colder. You know, playing fullback. But, but what a story. And, you know, Georgia Southern is still in this football game. They're looking at putting a drive together. And then the onside kick becomes a reality. The extra point is no good, but it is still a nine-point lead. Still very much a two-possession game. And look at Jolly heading into the end zone, and they're Jolly on the sidelines. Great comeback for Bailiff and company. Georgia Southern has seen a 19-point lead disappear. At one point, it was 35-16, but Texas State has scored touchdowns on four straight possessions. Teddy Kraft, throwing it back and Varvel gets it. They try the trick play, but Varvel was standing right in front of Reggie McCutcheon, and Texas State gets the ball back. Kraft is going to try to get the ball back to McCutcheon, but he never gets his eyes back to McCutcheon. Yeah, Teddy Kraft is learning about being a quarterback in a hurry. You can't let the football go unless you get your eyes over to McCutcheon and you see the danger in Varvel, the transfer, the former Sun Devil, had that play sniffed out, and he may have just slammed the door on the Eagles. Marvell, his second interception of the day. And Douglas Sherman now just trying to run this clock down. Georgia Southern calls its final timeout. And David Bailiff, who went to school here, you see this was a great program in Division II. They won a couple of national championships with Jim Wacker as their head coach. But then in 1984, joined Division I AA went through some lean years and then this young man still a young man came back here to his alma mater as the head coach and we asked him yesterday could you ever imagine coming here two years ago playing on Jim Wacker field that you would make the playoffs and he said no I never would have imagined it but then again I didn't know how special my 27 seniors were and he just went on and on about this team and how close they are. And I think we've really seen that composure today, David. They didn't flinch down 19. In the well, third. I'm, not, I'm not sure even David Bailiff knew coming into this game how special Barrick Neely is. And the Georgia Southern had an opportunity. Mike Seawalk had an opportunity. Still, you, you know, you're down 10 points, but the stranger things have happened. They try the throwback. Varvel, I think they officially give him a a fumble recovery on that play, but uh, he's made two big plays, and look at this. The statistics really show just how Barrick Neely dominated this football game, especially the last four possessions. Yes, you're right. Officially now it has been called a fumble recovery for Varvel on the throwback. And look at Sherman. Douglas Sherman will not be denied. He's running onto the track after the touchdown. Nine yards and another Bobcat score. Celebration has begun here in San Marcos, or San Marcos as the natives call it. I think the flag is for excessive celebration, but we wait on it. Texas State has a lot to celebrate. That's now five straight touchdowns on five straight possessions. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number 23 on the defense, contact with an official. He is ejected from the ball game. Penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. All right, so it was not excessive celebration, but Tariq Muhammad, who came in contact with an official, 
And this is a senior from Smyrna, Georgia, seeing his collegiate career end by getting tossed out. And Coach Seawalk has a few words for him. Can you imagine it, running away from your TV set late in the third quarter, have to pick somebody up at the airport, you get back home, and a 35-16 lead for Georgia Southern turns into a 51-35 deficit. Five straight possessions, five straight touchdowns. And two straight missed extra points for Stan Jones. Some of the fans here, most of the fans stayed, but some of them we saw bail out around the third quarter, but most of them have stayed, and boy, have, have they seen something. Yeah, Sherman's been something with his ability to get outside, the cutting ability and his quickness. He missed four games. The high ankle sprain was really a problem for him late in the season. But you can see the ability that he offers this team. And head coach David Bailiff, quite a bit of mileage being racked up by both teams. 400 yards passing for Barrick Neely, Pam. Unbelievable performance for him since he threw that interception. He has been picture perfect. And for this Georgia Southern team, again, they've won six national championships. But this is a team that has some really tough fans. They were very chagrined when they lost in the first round last year to New Hampshire. And now they're looking at another first round departure. Well, and you know, this was a tough assignment for both teams. Mike Seawalk said, you normally wouldn't get a matchup of these two teams, the number five and number seven teams in the playoffs, but it was really, as Mike Seawalk put it, a made-for-TV matchup. And, you know, Texas State survives this first game against Georgia Southern's offense, the tradition. I think the defense will be relieved to go up against an offense next week that isn't highly specialized like this spread option. And Texas State is going to survive a huge cheer. As Georgia Southern gets it from the 20. Texas State going to play Cal Poly next week. We've got great Division I AA action coming. This was a fun game to see. Wait do you see this one. Richmond taking on Hampton at 8 Eastern time on ESPNU. Hampton 11-0. You can watch that game, the Battle of Virginia. The NCAA Division I AA football playoffs on ESPNU tonight at 8 Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. The winner of that game will play Furman which beat Nichols State today. For the second time this year, Texas State has broken the 50-point mark. They scored 75 against Panhandle State last month. Georgia Southern needs a miracle, as that is Nick Clark taking down the quarterback, Jason Foster, who fumbles it out of bounds. On well, this defense for Texas State, Pam, you know, they, they played 11 games this year. Ten versus 10 teams, they were giving up less than 100 yards per game on the ground. The Nickel State team, you just talked about another option team. Texas State gave up 375 yards. So the, the Bobcats have a lot of trouble against the option. You know, before that last play, the loss on that last play, Georgia Southern had 379 yards on the ground. And I think it bears, you know, repeating that Texas State will be glad to move on and not face any more option offenses. Darius Smiley now has come in to play quarterback. He has thrown 26 passes this season as he relieves Jason Foster. Smiley on the rollout. And he throws that in the middle of the field. McCutcheon in the general area, but there's Foster, who is getting his left leg looked at. And he was off to a terrific start. The first two passes Foster threw today were touchdowns to Teddy Kraft, 138 yards, the other 57. As you get a good look at Smiley, also 5'9". It's a little bigger as far as weight, about 20 pounds or so heavier than Foster, but they're about the same height. Smiley's a guy that they like to get in for snaps during games, and they're not afraid to play smile. An opportunity for a throw from Kraft, and he goes down. And they're trying desperately to get some trick plays in, but this Texas State defense is having none of it, and remember, Kraft had a throwback on kick return that was snared by Daniel Varvel. And the specialty plays coming out late here, and uh, talked about Jason Foster and the game he had for Georgia Southern. He, he really 
was super throughout this game. But you look back to the interception, the you know, the bad throwing decision in his own end in the third quarter, and that might have been a mistake that, that turned the tide in this game. Barrick Neely had to convert, and I think Neely was, was the factor. 526 yards for Neely in the air and on the ground as Simmons makes another big play. David Bailiff coming back to his alma mater. And they are about to move on to a quarterfinal matchup next week against Cal Poly. And that game will be right here. Remember, they are the fourth seed as Texas State. There's going to be quite a buzz in San Marcos over the next six or seven days. And this is really a dream season. You, you go in and you sit down, you talk to Coach Bailiff, and, and it is these players and the community, the, the, the coaching staff, they get another week. They get another opportunity. They move down the road. Eric Neely takes a knee as Texas State will let the clock run down. Georgia Southern giving up 50 points, the most, as you see, since 1998 in the 1AA championship game against UMass. So well, it's been a long, long time. Well, if there's a silver lining there, Georgia Southern did win the national championship the following year. Yeah, so. that's true. They do get in every year, but they're about to go down in the first round for the second straight season. By taking these knees, Barrett Neely seeing his rushing yards disappear, but he's still going to be well over 100 yards on the ground. Look at that. For the senior from Dallas. The 400 yards passing, over 100 yards rushing. We mentioned at the top, over 800 yards rushing on the season. But to me, it's not the numbers that stand out Barrett Neely in this football game. He faced some third down situations late in the third quarter, early in the fourth quarter, where he absolutely had to convert or Texas State doesn't win this ball game. And he came through on every play, made some great decisions, pulling the ball down, running the ball. He was smart with the football. I'm a believer. I'm sold. So Texas State storming back from a 35-16 deficit, takes it 50 to 35. Barrett Neely with 526 yards of offense. David Bailey, Bailiff told us that if he died right now, the 05 season would be heaven because of the great turnaround. That was before this game, so now maybe a, another level of heaven for Bailey. He gets another level of playoffs as they take on Cal Poly next week. And you